Don't forget, following our game, Notre Dame tries to bounce back from the loss to Northwestern as they go to West Lafayette to take on a very good Purdue team. But first, more football here, and let's go down to the field and check in with John Spagnola. Spags? Terry's a bit of a controversy last week in the ACC as Bobby Bowden was accused of running up the score against Duke. That controversy underscores a larger issue. There's a huge gap between the Seminoles and the rest of the teams in the conference. The average margin of victory has been over 31 points a game. Clemson today believes it is the one team that can narrow that gap. They're going to try it in front of a home team sellout crowd. Back to you, Terry. All right, John Clemson hoping that that run up the score thing does not continue today here at Death Valley. And there is Jeff Sabe, the kicker. Clemson has won the toss, but they elected to defer to the second half. So Florida State will receive. And back deep for the Seminoles, Rock Preston and Jermaine Green, a couple of guys who can absolutely fly. And it is Green at his own four-yard line. Some room up the right sideline. And a great return out to the 47-yard line. A 45-yard return by Jermaine Green, and the tackle made by Marlon Green, number 41 for Clemson, but the celebration already on the sideline for Florida State. Just have so much team speed and depth. And you look at Danny Cannell, who had a great week last week. I mean, he's never been more confident and comfortable than he is right now. You know, he was beaten up by the media last year, not necessarily warranted after the Miami game, but now, as we uh, talked to Bobby Bowden the last couple of days, he says the guy's just making throws. He's playing with confidence. Tremendous leader. And the Miami game last year, he was taken out, and then the Florida game, in which he had a comeback, really the game that set up uh, his confidence for this year. Four receivers in on first down, and the play action by Cannell. He's got a man. It's number 19, E.G. Green, across the 40. And a first down on the first play from scrimmage for Florida State. A look at the chilly starting lineup. The backs and receivers for Florida State. Warwick Dunn, 1,000 yards last year, and Andre Cooper caught nine balls last week against Duke for 155 yards. How about Cooper? Nine receptions, 27 last year, five touchdowns. Outstanding player. Cooper Williams and Rock Preston in there. The reverse to Philip Riley, and he's got room. Down the sidelines, he may go. Knocked out of bounds at the four-yard line. Philip Riley on the reverse. You know it has to come from Bobby Bowden at some point, and he goes to it early. Ryan Dawkins, the strong safety, finally knocked him out of bounds. Key to any reverse, of course, is the containment. Stop it right there, and you'll see this guy right here is the contain man. Watch how he loses his feet. He goes down, and there's nobody there for blood control. Go ahead and roll it. He goes down. See you later. Oh, escort in front of him. Williams and Dunn in the backfield out of the eye. A 37-yard gain on the reverse. And here is Dunn on the sweep, trying to get outside. And he is stuffed at the three-yard line. Number 16, Liam on Evans and Dexter McQueen were there to make the stop. And for Florida State, the offensive line, a very good one. It is anchored by their center, Clay Shiver, an All-American, and Jesus Hernandez, who had a very good game against Duke last week. Juan Moriano, the backup, and Hernandez switched back and forth for that split tackle. Second and goal at the two. Straight ahead. And he's in the end zone. Touchdown, Florida State. Hubert Williams. It is going to be critical now, Terry, for Clemson to maintain its composure. 54 of their 84 guys are freshmen or sophomores. Florida State coming out like this and dominating early scoring just here in the first couple of minutes. You know, it's the kind of thing that will deflate you early, but you've got to maintain your composure and continue to play well. Well, Scott Bentley in for the extra point, and last week against Duke, Tim, Duke won the toss. They elected to defer to the second half, and that's what Clemson does here today. And Florida State drives right down the field on their first drive to take a 7-0 lead here at Death Valley. Florida State's touchdown, Bates. This is Fordham. Watch them go. Then watch number 77, Hernandez, lead it up in there. Followed by Pooh Bear, who's 280 pounds. I'm telling you folks, you're talking about 600 pounds just out of two guys <laughs> leading it up in the hole. You have no shot to stop it. Yeah, how many 280 pullbacks went straight ahead, huh, in college football? They list him at 260. He's nowhere near. Then you lead with Hernandez, who's 290. Andre Humphrey and Andre Williams back deep for the Clemson Tigers. Bentley's kick. Four yards deep, and they'll bring it up. 
This is Humphrey out to the 16-yard line, and maybe not, not a very good decision to bring that one out of the end zone. Tackle made by Jermaine Green, number 42, plays both ways for the Florida State Seminole. Well, Clemson will have to get something going offensively early, Timmy. They did not want to see Florida State drive down the field in the first series and score. And right now there is a flag on the field. And that is back at the 37-yard line of Florida State. We'll try to sort it out. Encroachment on the kicking team. Five yards, re-kick. So Clemson gets a break. Terry McCauley, the referee today, explained that they were all sides, which is normal for early in the season and early in a ball game. Want to sprint down and get into your lane. Sometimes you beat the kicker across that line and they'll flag it in a hurry. Well, we talked to Tommy West, the head coach for Clemson, too, and he said kicking was going to be a very important part of this game. Now, he was a, an assistant coach at Clemson during the 80s under Danny Ford and the wins over Florida State that they enjoyed and the close games that they had. He said the kicking game really played a large role. Well, the kicking game normally does. I mean, remember the old punt rooski that Clemson, uh -huh. Clemson had? Florida State uh, has used the kicking game a couple of times because these two teams have played fairly closely over the last decade. Of course, the last two have been a little bit shaky. Last year was 17-0. It was a blowout year before for Florida State. But for the most part, the kicking game has been the biggest factor between these two. Well, last year's 17-0 game, actually, in terms of the ACC and the fans, they figured that was a moral victory for Clemson. Everyone else was being blown out in the whole seminal to 17 Certainly was not considered a victory by Tommy West and the Clemson fans, but unlike most of the games in the ACC, so Bentley's kickoff again, and again Humphrey this time at his own one. Across the 20, out to the 24-yard line. So better field position for the Tigers after the penalty on Florida State. With a 24-yard return. Well, the young man who has led this team the second half of last year and now to start this year, Elon Green, gaining confidence by the game, Tim. Well, he really is, and one of the highlights for him is the fact that very few turnovers occur when Green plays. Last week, he had eight different receivers. He's playing with a great deal of confidence, although they want to keep that because he is relatively inexperienced. Out of the eye, Emory Smith and Lamont Pegues, the starting backfield, and here's the quick out. And some room and a first down out to the 36-yard line. The quick hitter. And Clemson, a fine play on first down. A 12-yard gain. You look at the Chili starting lineup for Clemson. Raymond Priester and Antoine Wyatt, the big play man, who was really a lot of their offense last year. Wyatt's got that great speed. As a matter of fact, four receptions last week, 30 last year, at 144 all-purpose yards last week. That's impressive. They want to get him involved here quickly. One wide involved early on the first play, but he's straight ahead and he's going nowhere. Stopped right at the line of scrimmage. Sam Howard, the outside linebacker, number 56, was there to meet him. And the offensive line, a big one for Clemson. Glenn Roundtree, perhaps their best performer on that line. Well, he's a junior college transfer. Young is a four-year starter in Morgan. He grew up right here in Clemson, so he knows and lives the tradition of Tiger football. Here's Green to throw. And overthrows Wyatt, who is popped right at the 40-yard line. Robert Hammond just laid a lick right on Antoine Wyatt to remind him that he's out there. They say he has as much potential as anybody on that defense, and that he's a former or a future NFL guy. And now Wilson gets the start today instead of Pierre Bowler, who started last week. Wilson, returning sack leader in the ACC. And a fine defensive front. Well, P.S. Roy, maybe as talented as anyone with they've had in the last few years, and they've had some good ones. Yeah, he's a first-round pick waiting to happen. And then Priester will run back in there and leave the throw. Scrambling has a man. That's Priester who drops the football. They're going to say he never had control. No, are they going to give him the completion? No, incomplete. They're rolling really incomplete. Yeah, that's a play that they have to connect with. Well, I know the, the sideline down there, Tommy West and his guys wanted the completion and the fumble out of bounds, Clemson ball there. I don't think he ever had control, and that's what the officials finally decided. It's a good play by Green, though. He made the defense commit, never lost his composure, just let it out there for him. Samari rolls back deep, waiting for Chris McAnally's punt. No pressure to set up the return. And a short kick by McAnally that Roll will field at his own 27-yard line. So a 38-yard punt and no return and pretty good field position again for Florida State. 
on their second series of the ball game. Now, you know, Florida State last week defeated Duke 70-26. to It was Bobby Bowden's 250th win, and these are the names that he joined. Bear Bryant and a number of others, and everybody thinks it's a big deal. How about Bobby Bowden? Nothing, nothing. It's amazing. It, 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 you know, if I was through coaching, I think it might mean something. I think I'd go back and say, oh, man, look at here. 250 wins, you know. But right now, we've just got another game, you know. And that one game scares you more than anything that happened behind you. So when I get through coaching one of these days, I'm going to look back and see what happened. Right now, I don't know and do not care. <laughs> he is a piece of work. Always congenial, funny, and extremely candid. Work done off the left side for about six yards on first down. And, you know, you can laugh and joke like that when you've got guys like Warwick Dunn and Rock Preston and, and all the talent that Bobby's recruited here. No huddle here. I can't tell you how important this is for the defensive Clemson now to make a stop. If they don't, this game could be over early. Kubar Williams and Rock Preston in the backfield out of the eye. Play action for Cannell over the middle. He's got a man, and it's dropped by E.G. Green. Wide open to coverage by Leamon Evans, but he had it right in the breadbasket. So Clemson holds on the second series, and Timmy, as you said, very big series for their defense to stop Florida State. Terry, this is huge. I mean, this is as big as it gets for Clemson. Third and four at the 34-yard line. Out of the shotgun, Cannell overthrows Green again. Covered by Andre Humphrey. I think, Cannell, I think Cannell was a little bit confused. They came out with a combination defense, played a little man and zone to the backside. Cannell couldn't read it properly. Well, the Clemson coaching staff talked about it. They want to change things up on Cannell and not make it easy for him to read the defense today. Well, they had their two safeties, Dawkins and Evans, playing center field. Watch this thing. Well, we're not going to see it, but they were playing deep, and it looked like a zone coverage. They came in locked on quickly. Cannell didn't read it. Sean List back for his first punt of the day. Anton Wyatt back at his own 23-yard line. We'll watch it bounce out of bounds, and Clemson will start at its own 19-yard line. 48 yards on the punt, Clemson football. CFA College Football on ABC Sports, brought to you by Chevrolet Trucks, the most dependable, longest-lasting trucks on the road. Napa Auto Parts, we keep America running. Visa, it's everywhere you want to be. And Compact Computer Corporation. Beautiful day here in Clemson, South Carolina, better known as Death Valley, as Bobby Bowden in his 20th year. Tries to get win number 251. He doesn't think it's a big deal, but I'll tell you, there's some big names on that list. Well, I played here when I was in Maryland. I can see why they call it Death Valley, and it is hot today. Feels like Death Valley. I-80. First and 10, and straight ahead for about two yards. They bring Priester, I believe. Out of the shotgun. And for Florida State, the linebacking core, a good one. They get Daryl Bush back today. He was out last week with an injury. Howard and Reball also leaders of that defense. Yeah, but it's Bush who is the best of the bunch. He's quick, he's strong, he reads. He has no false steps. He looks like he is buff, too. I mean, he's playing with a sore knee, but I mean, he is cut. Second and seven, Elon Green off play action. He's got Tony Horn across the 30 in a big game, and an important one as they get the first down on a gain of 11. An important series for Clemson. And Florida State's defensive back, Sean Hamlet, the only returning starter, but Byron Capers may be the man under the spotlight today, Tim. Well, he plays the boundary corner. He's the man-to-man -man guy. He'll get locked on a lot, but if there's a weakness to this Florida State defense, this is it, the secondary, not as strong as it has been in recent years. Green on the option. Here's Priester over the right side, across the 40 to the 42-yard line. So, you know, we have talked about it. Clemson needs to establish the running game early in this game to instill some confidence and maybe loosen, loosen up that defense, and that's what they're doing right now. Priester is probably one of the most versatile guys back there. He plays fullback most of the time. Took some reps at tailback this week. Ends up starting because Pagis has a pulled muscle, sprained ankle, bad knee. Although when he came out to practice Thursday, we watched him. Pagis was running like a rocket. So I assume we'll see him too when Priester gets tired. Now Mickey Andrews, the defensive coordinator for Florida State. Trying to find a way to stop this offense right now. Second and two out of the eye. Green to throw. He's going deep to Horn. 
just off his fingertips. The coverage by Capers right away, and they challenge him. That man-to-man -man coverage we were talking about, they like to go to the boundary. Capers is the guy that plays to that short side. He gets locked on, and that time, to be honest, he did have a step. The ball was just a little bit out there too far. Last week against Duke, that was the one part of the game that Bobby Bowden maybe wasn't entirely pleased with, the secondary, and some of the mistakes that they made. A little bit undisciplined in the second half. Yeah, but Terry, it's not, not having any talent back there. Uh, they've got plenty of talent right now. They're just learning the position. They don't even line it up correctly sometimes, Bobby said. Third and two for Clemson. Green to throw again. Overthrows Antoine Wyatt, who was covered by number 20, James Colsey, who was out some last week in an ankle injury. Uh, he may be inexperienced, but Green that time really did something smart. He saw that he was covered. It was a dangerous throw. The out pattern across the field, so he threw it away. Chris McAnally in for his second punt of the day. And Samari Roll back at his own 13-yard line. but it's 18, here's Roll. Knocked down right away. Stopped at the 29. And a big hit. And good coverage by Clemson. Okay. CFA College Football on ABC Sports, brought to you by Napa Auto Parts. We keep America running. Visa, it's everywhere you want to be. And Compact Computer Corporation. Terry Gannon, Tim Brandt, and John Spagnola here at Memorial Stadium, better known as Death Valley in Clemson, South Carolina. As Florida State leads 7 0 with 9.49 left to go in the first quarter. And Danny Cannell with that lightning offense out of the shotgun again. Four receivers in. A lot of time, and here's E.G. Green to his knees at the 34. A couple of yards short of a first down, gain of about eight. And for a moment, let's go down to the field and check in with John Spagnola. John? Miles Aldridge, the defensive coordinator for Clemson, was given his young linebacker, Adrian Dingle, a nice talking to after the first drive by Florida State, which was successful. A lot of inexperience at this linebacker position for the Tigers, and they need to play a disciplined defense like they did in that second series, stopping Florida State. Terry? Dingle had to start today, John, because the Sioux was banged up, but I suspect the Sioux will play. Uh-huh. Now, he's able to go, but... At the linebacking core where you've got three first-year players in there and a grad student and a former quarterback. That's right. Now on second and two. Again complete. And it's Andre Cooper at the 42-yard line. So a first down from Florida State. Andre Humphrey, number 34 on the coverage and the hit. A nine-yard game for the first down. And the defensive line for Clemson led by Carlos Curry, the middle guard who will have to go head-to-head -head with Clay Shiver all day long. He's a senior, experienced, solid, fundamentally sound, 6'2", 285-pounder. Out of the shotgun on first down. And over the middle, through the hands of Wayne Messon, who was well covered by number 29, Peter Ford, the cornerback out of Sumter, South Carolina. And the linebackers for Clemson. There you have a look at Adrian Dingle. First-year player, the freshman getting the start today. Patrick Sapp, of course, the quarterback the last couple of years and has moved to the linebacking position and put out about 25 pounds as well. Second and 10, Canel the throw. On the out to Green and broken up. He was double covered. And just off the fingertips of E.G. Green. Good play by Carter. We talked about the secondary of Florida State being their weakness. Well, for Clemson, that's their strength. you got a couple of guys that are going to be first-rounders led by Dawkins. He's the best defensive player they have. Third and 10 at the 42. Canal overthrows his receiver again. Philip Wiley, the intended man, and Andy Ford on the cover. Right now, Clemson is moving its defense around. They're doing what they call stemming, giving them different looks, playing some combinations. Pinnell is struggling with his reads right now. Consequently, he hasn't found any rhythm. Bobby Bowden trying to find some way to move the football here against Clemson. Danny Cannell only three of eight for 30 yards right now. And Liss into punt again. 
Here's Antoine Wyatt who wants his hit bounce again. And a good bounce for Florida State inside the 10 to the 9-yard line. So 48 yards on the punt. And Clemson backed up inside their own 10. Welcome back to Death Valley and a look at Tim's game plan. Tim? Well, Florida State, I think, Terry, has to be very good. Uh, outrageous and aggressive in their game plan. Last year they came in here, they were conservative and had one of their worst games. And last week, they, uh, Duke had over 400 yards of offense against them because of some mental mistakes and breakdowns, and Bobby's trying to eliminate that. For Clemson, they really do have to be unpredictable and run a lot of formations, run on passing downs, pass on running downs for early success, and then shorten the game as much as possible. They want to use as much of that game clock, and then the funnel clog deflate, I love that. You have to stop the runners outside, funnel them back inside, and then if you do that, it takes some of the air out of their tires and slows them down. Can you funnel clog without deflating? Or funnel? No, if you do that, they'll deflate in a hurry. All ties in together. First and 10 at their own 10. The kick out and it's dropped. Antoine Wyatt had it, may have looked up before he caught it. See, now he's deflated. He is at this point. In fact, we brought it up during the commercial. You talked about it. Antoine Wyatt has twice let punch drop and bounce, and they've lost 15 to 20 yards both times. You know, last year he was a, a receiver. He was a part-time tailback. They moved him around because they wanted to utilize his speed. He's got to keep his eye on the ball. He was looking to see where his blockers were, and he was also trying to look up field. Right now, Green's just two for seven, 24 yards, but he's had three drops. Mm -hmm. Second and 10. And Priester now in the backfield along with Elon Green. And it's going to be Priester on the left side. Pretty good game. Across the 15 to the 16-yard line. And that will bring up third and about four. The hit made by number 48, Todd Rebol. And Daryl Bush, number 44. Bush, of course, back off that knee injury this last week's game. Just out of the shotgun, they run a little draw. Run nicely, and... They pick up a few yards, but that's something that Florida State's not going to fall for. In, in the middle, they're packed tight. They're going to challenge them to throw the ball until Clemson has some success there. And by doing that, I mean, they're going to load up against the run and say, come on, run at us. We dare you to throw. First time a number one team has played here at Death Valley. Here's Raymond Priester, and he adds the first down. Some nifty running along the left side. Priester 6 one 2 20 out of Allendale, South Carolina, the number two rusher for Clemson last year. And eight carries for 61 yards against Western Carolina last week. And a game in which I think this Clemson offense really got their, their feet underneath them. You know, they scored 55 points and actually were accused at one point of running up the score themselves. And that's something that Tommy West has said hasn't happened a long time here in Clemson, at least a couple of years. First down at their own 22, Kelton Dunnigan, and he has fullback for the first time today. On the option, Green loses the football. He may have lost it, too. It may be Florida State ball. It looked like Capers may have gotten in there to recover. Florida State thinks they have it, and they do. The long scramble, but they've already given the sign. Florida State football on Byron Capers, number 23, the boundary cornerback. The man who recovered the fumble. See, this is driving Tommy West crazy because he had nobody around him. He was wide open. I think it shocked him. He lost control, lost concentration, put it on the ground. Instead of falling on it, he couldn't control it. Went down to his knees, and they got it back. He may have been shocked to find himself that wide open with so much room. But that's the way that play is designed. They, they put wide receivers out there, spread the defense thin, created air. He went to the back side. It was wide open. So the Seminoles get a break, and certainly... Tommy West feeling that they don't need any today. Cooper Williams, Rock Preston, in a split backfield. And Cannell under center as the backfield goes to the eye. Flag on the play. Complete inside the 10 to the 9 to E.G. Green. The hit made by Brian Dawkins, but again, there's a flag in the backfield. This one's got to be coming back. For Clemson to have success today, for Clemson to have any chance, they've got to play a near-perfect ball game, and so far they haven't been doing it. You can't turn the ball over. Look, they get suckered up here on the play action. That frees it up in the secondary, and this ball is as well thrown as you possibly can. The ball was perfect. Clemson gets a break because of the penalty against the Seminoles. You can't cover much better than Brian Dawkins did on that play, but the ball was just perfect. Brian Dawkins from Jacksonville, Florida. Took a lot of grief a couple of years ago when they lost 57 to nothing. It was an elite illegal shift for the penalty against Florida State. Makes it first and 15. And here goes Rock Preston, only ahead for a couple of yards. Mm -hmm. 
And don't forget, tonight starts with an incredible hour starring two of the world's greatest illusionists, Siegfried and Roy, the magic, the mystery. You won't believe your eyes. Then finish your night with Gremlins 2, the new batch, all tonight here on ABC. Second and 14, Canel the throw. Wide open at the 16-yard line and caught by number 19, E.G. Green, with another flag down back at the 37. Lamont Evans is saying it was offensive pass interference. I don't think he's going to sell him on that. These last two passes, even with flags down, are the best that Cannell's thrown all day. He's four for nine, but those last two he threw perfect. Mm -hmm. Over the middle with one, and then the, the long out across the field to Green. Take a look at this. This will be against Clemson, so they won't move far to stay back, but they come with a game. They play a little stunt. Cannell still has plenty of time, steps up, and he throws this with authority. See, he's getting into his rhythm now, and if that happens, look out. That's a long throw across the field. And here's the no huddle again. They like to call it the lightning offense. First down at the 15. They give to Preston. He's got a hole. Down to the five-yard line. A good game for Preston on first down. Lamon Evans, number 16, made the stop. He may have saved the touchdown. Well, just watch this hole. The offensive line fires out. Preston doesn't need much of one. But watch this. Stop it right there. Look at this hole that he's got. He could take it to the outside and score, but, I mean, that hole is huge. Good block by number 71, Todd Fordham again. He made a nice block on the first touchdown by Williams. All right, so you have the turnover, Terry, that gave the ball back to Florida State. You had that last penalty against Clemson because they couldn't get the guys off the field fast enough. Oh, they had too many guys on the field. They killed themselves with mental errors, and you can't do that against the number one team in the nation. They don't need much help. 74 to nothing in the last two games against the Clemson Tigers. 17 nothing last year. And after the measurement, they were just short, so it brings up second down and less than a yard. Cooper Williams, Rock Preston out of the eye now. The give to Williams straight ahead. Is he going to get there? Yeah, no doubt about it. Cooper with his second touchdown of the day. He scored three last week against Duke on the six-yard run. And Florida stayed up now 13 to nothing. Folks, does he look like he's 275 pounds to you? That's a great athlete right there. Very tough to bring down. 6'1", 275, had new knee surgery last year out of Crescent City. Drafted by the Chicago Cubs out of high school, as a matter of fact. Bentley on for his second point after try, and it is good. He had a couple blocked last week and missed one. So two for two on the day for Scott Bentley. And the Seminoles rolling with 5.58 left here in the first. Watch this. This is sheer power, folks. We'll again show you the big hole, but look at him. He sneaks through and then just runs over people. You know, there's nothing really there to, to telestrate or show you other than sheer power. This guy is a big man, and he's taking on guys in the secondary. Now, the guy he runs over is 190 pounds, and he just pushes him right into the end zone. You take 275 pounds and put him up against a 190-pounder, I guarantee you, nine times Guess out of ten, he'll put, <laughs> he'll put you in the end zone. Well, you know, Bobby Bowden was really upset with Pooh Bear coming into camp because he he came in at about 295, which uh, for a fullback is a little bit heavy. And they list him, as I said, as 260. It really goes by 280. And I'm giving him the benefit of the doubt <laughs> saying 275 because I don't want Pooh Bear mad at me. Now, don't forget at the conclusion of today's game, we'll be selecting the genuine Chevrolet, most valuable player of the game from each team. To date, Chevrolet has contributed almost $5.5 million to the scholarship funds of America's colleges and universities. Four plays, 30 yards, a minute 16 off the clock, and that's after the turnover by Neilan Green. Well, you see guys just hanging on Pooh Bear as he carries him into the end zone. He doesn't look like a Pooh Bear. A little bit far from the fridge. I don't think he's quite in the fridge category yet. Of course, the fridge played here at Clemson. Yes, he did. One of the great players throughout the years for both of these teams. I mean, all the players who are playing in the NFL right now, but there have been some good ones throughout the years, as well as coaches. We mentioned Frank Howard, the legendary coach, and Howard's Rock still at the top of the hill today. 
Danny Ford, of course, with the great run in the 80s, the national championship for Clemson in 81. So Bentley to kick away again. Williams and Humphrey deep. And actually, this is Antoine Wyatt. Moving out to about the 17-yard line. So Clemson will start at his own 17-yard line. While we have a moment, let's take it to New York and check in with our buddy John Saunders. John? All right, Terry, thanks a lot. Nebraska had jumped out to a 10 to nothing lead against Michigan State, but the Spartans fighting back. Third and 16, Tony Banks back to pass. Musa Muhammad, 16 yards on the reception. Lawrence Phillips already with 63 yards and a touchdown in the game. Terry. All right, John, so a good one going there in uh, the 62 points last week. That had something to do with Florida State 70 points against Florida State. Lamont Pegues straight ahead for a couple of yards on first down. That'll bring up second and about seven. And we have this quick moment. Let's go down to John Spagnola. Max? Thanks, Terry. I got a quick sports trivia question for you. Which NFL stadium has the largest seating capacity? Oh, I the think answer? that's an easy one. Clemson Memorial Stadium, 81,473. It's a little bit larger than the Pontiac Silverdome and Rich Stadium. And this year, it's the temporary home of the Charlotte Panthers. In one end zone, you have the Panthers. In the other end zone, you have the Clemson Tigers. Back to you, Terry. Yeah, see, John was going to try to get us. He was going to give us that trick question, but we knew it. You know, I knew it for some reason. I'm not, maybe the Panthers in the end zone had something to do with it. Carolina Panthers playing here this year, and uh, Clemson... Of course, owning the other end zone. And, uh, yeah, if they pack them in on the hill, it actually gets to about 83,000 here at Death Valley. They're building the new stadium right in uptown Charlotte. You know, there have been a lot of national championships in the Atlantic Coast Conference. Clemson has one. Georgia Tech has one. Maryland has one. Florida State. Mm -hmm. Right now, the rest of the league's trying to catch up to Florida State now, though. They're in a league of their own. Third and eight. And Neilon Green out of the shotgun. Priester in as the setback. Green trying to run and grab from behind at the 19-yard line. Tyrant Marion from Pompano Beach, Florida, with the strong right arm. Boy, it's good to see him back. You know, he had a knee injury that really slowed him down last year. He's worked on it, rehabbed it. Guy's 6'2", 255 pounds. He's got some speed back, and you can see it on that play. Good to have him back. Boy, that front for Florida State is as talented as they've had. And, you know, you're talking about Derek Alexander from last year, but the coaches think that this... This defensive front has more speed than they've ever had. Samari roll back, waiting Chris McAnally's punt. And off the side of the foot, a low line drive kick. And Roll watches it go out of bounds at the 26-yard line. So a fortunate bounce for McAnally and the Tigers. 54-yard punt, and it goes out of bounds at the... 26-yard line right about there. You know, you talked about the guys that Florida State has lost. Derek Brooks, Alexander and Bush went to the NFL. Abraham's gone. And the defense for Florida State in recent years has featured guys like Marvin Jones and, and Derek Alexander, Terrell Buckley. Mm -hmm. And I think Bobby, Bobby said it best. If he could prevent guys from going to the National Football League, they, they would be even more dominant than they are now. But he's got such talent that they leave a little bit early, go and play pro and do quite well. Well, Bobby has recruited throughout the years in South Carolina, but now that the coaching situation here is stable with Tommy West and Brad Scott in South Carolina, he said he may not go after them quite as much. Straight ahead, Rock Preston actually wore it done to the 29-yard line, and let's go back to New York and check in with John. All right, Terry, a little action in the SEC, LSU and Mississippi State. First play from scrimmage, Derek Tate back to pass, and he goes deep, 80 yards to Eric Moulds. 7-0 is the score for Tate, his fifth touchdown pass of the year. Terry. Thanks, John. Eric Moulds, a guy who can fly. And here's a pickoff pass. Back to the 34-yard line. There is a flag on the play. I think picked off by Dexter McLean, Tim. I think they're going to call pass interference. McLean got the tip. Ball came off. Dawkins may have been pushed. He was. He came up and hit early. That caused the deflection. we got to get John Saunders in that hurry-up offense because <laughs> they aren't even huddling here. So a possible big play for Clemson turns into a pass interference call. And Dawkins on the hit, and you're right with the tip. And Cannell with that lightning offense. Pass interference. Sleep on him. On the defense. 15 yards, first down. Dawkins is the Tigers' fastest guy. He's the leader in the deep zones, leading tackler in the secondary. But watch this. Number 20 comes up and actually makes the contact bump there. There's no question. Good call. And McLean gets the tip. Looked like a turnover, but it's a good flag. So 
Florida State now with the ball at their own 44 after the 15 yard penalty. And a moment while the officials sort things out down on the field. The crowd continues to boo. They didn't like the call. But you could see the contact was made before the ball got there. Mm -hmm. Now there's no question it was a good call. Now, we talked about it at the top of the te telecast. Clemson needing some play, something to happen early to give them some confidence. And you know, so far, they've had a couple of chances, but it hasn't happened. And the turnover by Elon Green, the fumble led to the second Florida State score. So first and 10 at the 45, and there goes Warwick Dunn. Flag back at the line of scrimmage, and Dunn's still on his feet. Inside the 25. Inside the 10 and brought down at the six yard line. Warwick Dunn with a long run. It looked like he was stopped a couple of times. Andy Ford finally brought him down. A gain of 48, but the flag laying down at his own 44 yard line. Bringing that one back before we got a well designed play. You're talking about what looked to be a draw type. Cannell really carried out the fake. Holding on the offense, 10 yards. Still first down. You know, when we talked about the keys to the ball game, it was Bobby Bowden who said they've got to eliminate the mental mistakes. Here's a 48-yard play, and they call it back because of holding. Actually went straight to Warwick Dunn. You know, I didn't see the holding, though. As a matter of fact, I was watching Bates. I thought he was the guilty party, but even though he had his hands extended, I don't think he ever locked or went wider than the shoulders. Well, they back him up to the 34, so it's first and 21 now. Held the throw. Got a man out of the backfield. That's Rock Preston out to the 43-yard line. So he brings it almost to the original line of scrimmage. And that's one of the things, one of the many things, that Florida State does so well, throw to their backs out of the backfield. Warwick Dunn, second leading, second returning pass catcher after last year. And that Rod Preston also catches the ball very well. So second and 12, and down goes Cannell. The pressure by number 95, Renan Randolph. And Tim, it looked like he hit him, but then Cannell just slipped on the turf after that. Came from the backside. Randolph is another one of those guys. He missed last season because of an illness. 275 pounder came through almost untouched. But he's got great strength. I don't know if he just scared Cannell or whether he got one of his big bear paws on him, but he did go down. You do hear those footsteps when a guy's 6'2, 270. Third and 17, a big play for the Clemson defense here. Cannell flushed out of the pocket. They now throws it up and it's caught at the 44. Pass complete to Damian Harrell, but they don't gain much at all on the play. Tony Planton, number 96, the defensive end on the pressure. And it looks like Bernard Randolph is down and injured. They say the defense can change the tone of a ball game. Look at this right here. They came through, got a lot of good pressure, chased Cannell out of the pocket. I don't know what Cannell was thinking when he put this ball up for grabs. This could have been easily picked off, but he took some pretty good licks, put the ball up for grab, and it looks like Randolph is down injured. But the defense all of a sudden has changed the tone of the game and gotten the crowd back in it. Now it's up to the offense to get a couple of first downs and try to get some points on the board, keep this confidence going, this sustained little change they've got here. And I believe that's Bernard Randolph who was injured and now is sitting up, which is a good sign. He had a nice little series there. Yeah, absolutely. He had the sack a moment ago on Danny Cannell and now Pressured Cannell out of the pocket. So Sean Liss in the punt. He'll let it go right about 37. Antoine White, we'll see if he catches this one. Yeah, at his own seven. Looking for room. Still on his feet. And brought down, knocked out of bounds at the 19-yard line. So this time, Wyatt fields the punt in a nifty little return of about 11 yards. Now, Tommy West has enjoyed this atmosphere here at Death Valley for many years as an assistant, now a head coach, and certainly wants to use that. There is a tremendous amount of pride in their 
there's no way that I could sit here and tell you the pride in playing in that stadium over there. Uh, I think our football team uh, now understands what that means. And what we talk about is uh, we're not here to enjoy what's been built or enjoy the, the tradition and the reputation that Clemson has. We're here to try to carry that on. Part of that tradition, fine running backs. There's the fullback, Emery Smith, straight ahead for a first down. Emery, the brother of someone you may know. Yeah, he looked like Emmett on that play. Brother of Emmett Smith of the, the Dallas Cowboys, but Emery's a little bit bigger at 6 feet, 238 pounds. I think Emmett's just about 5'8 and a half. Boy, he ran with power that time and authority. No, one thing Emery won't do today that Emmett did on Monday night is maybe celebrate, huh? After some of these scores, no more celebrations in college football. Lamont Pegues ahead to the 35-yard line, and let's take you back to New York and check in with John Saunders. John? Thanks a lot. Kevin Falk here of LSU takes off and goes 10 yards for the touchdown and ties this game up with Mississippi State. We'll keep you updated right now. Terry, back to you. All right, John, Jerry DiNardo in his second game as head coach. Tied up 7-7 with Mississippi State. Runs in ahead for maybe two yards. The ball carrier Emery Smith once again. So that'll bring up third and about three for the Tigers. Good move by head coach Tommy West of Clemson. He had Priester running a tailback. Now he takes him out and puts some fresh legs in there. That's Lamont Pegues, who we said we saw it at practice the other day was running well. Pegues has that bumper pool style of running. And they'll also have Smith in there as the pounder. There's Pegues. So Smith and Pegues in the eye on third and a long three, maybe four. The pitch to Pegues. Stopped right near the marker. We'll see if he has the first down. I think he's got it. Robert Hammond, number six, made the hit. Here in pretty Clemson. good hit. Here in Clemson, you get favorable marks. That's a first down. The crowd helping to make the call is a great place to play. Boy, what a fantastic crowd they get here for the Tigers. I mean, you played here as an opponent. For the you really did. You know, when they come running down that hill to start things, when I was at Maryland, they brought us up to midfield just to watch them. Has anyone ever fallen? That's what I want to know. Coming down. Here's Neilon Green left up in the backfield. Well, that's what we were waiting for. That's why we came up to midfield. We thought somebody might pull a hamstring or trip or something. <laughs> I've not seen that yet here at Clemson. So the end of the first quarter, Florida State ahead by a couple of touchdowns. 14-0, back in a moment. Action Monday on ABC. I was out in Green Bay two weeks ago for one of their preseason games. Boy, far, that entire team looks solid. Well, the Bears surprising early on, too. And Tony Horn gets a surprising hit at the 45. That's a pass complete to Horn, and he is not straight to the turf by number 23, Tony Byron Horn. Capers. Comes a big third down play now. He just doesn't run this pattern deep enough. Again, Green has time. Look at the protection he gets. And he just drills him off. They try to run off the corner on that side, but he didn't take the bait. He didn't go with the deep man, just stayed in his zone. Came up and made the, the play. Very, very solid by Capers. Capers, we mentioned he would be tested today, and so far he's passed the test. Third and six. Green trying to scramble out of it. And the crowd wants an interference call, but of course it's in the backfield and the ball was tipped. Oh, so no flag on the play. Green under pressure and had the ball tipped. Well, not Pegues, the intended receiver. But watch the pressure off the right side. They come in. There's a man free. Now the ball is tipped by Orpheus. Watch Orpheus roll and get his hand on it. And you said it, once that ball's tipped, everybody's free game. Mm -hmm. No interference call. Good no, no call. Fourth and six, and McAnally in the pump once again. Under pressure, this one's blocked. Florida State with the block, and they have it at the 36-yard line. So, Tim, two big plays in this game so far. The fumble by Neilon Green, and now the block on the McAnally punt. Actually, there's more than that, Terry. Not only the fumble, but the kicking game for Clemson has been horrendous. One of the four don'ts of the kicking game is don't let the ball hit the ground and don't get anything blocked. Watch this thing. You've got three guys that could possibly block this. 
out. Actually, more than that, it looked like a jailbreak. Everybody came through free. I don't know what they were doing. There was absolutely no protection. Bernie Crawford may have been the man to get the hand on it. I'm not sure. I know Rodney Welsh recovered it. Breakdown of the kicking game has been terrible for Tommy Westbrook. So first down at the 37, Cannell out of the shotgun and goes to his back. That's Rock Preston up the sideline, knocked out of bounds at the 25. So a good gain on first down for Preston in the Seminole. And you just cannot allow this team any more breaks than they would normally get in a football game. I mean, they don't need any. No, you give them the ball right here, and for Florida State, that's like running downhill. You shorten the field that much, they're going to score on you. So they move the change, and the ball at the 26. And Andrews drops it on the exchange from Canella. It goes right back to the Clemson Tigers, and what a big turn of events. Canell was trying to hand it to Dennis Andrews. And Tony Dassault, number 33, comes up with it. Everybody's saying, yeah, you think they're going to score? Watch this. Florida State makes mistakes, too. Cannell just let it hang in there on the fake too long. He got it caught up on the hip. All right, so that's a big turnover. and gives another shot at the Tigers. Watch this, though. You watch the head of Cannell. He lets the ball sit there. He's looking downfield already. And because he leaves it on the hip, it just stays there and gets caught on the hip, and it's gone. And Dassou, who broke his hand on Wednesday in practice, did not start today, but makes a big play here with the recovery. Here's Kogis. To the 46. 15 yards on the carry for Lamont Kogis. Sean Hamlet, number 18, the free safety, knocked him out of bounds. Clemson's not going to die. This is a club that's averaged over 20 points a game over the last five years. Look at this hole. Again, it looks like it's almost a draw. It's a play-action type thing. Now, if you can get your receiver to throw a block, you're in business. Didn't get one, though. Horn just kind of played with him, tap danced with him, and didn't throw the block. But that's a big game by Pegues. The pitch again to Pegues, and turning the corner out to the 49-yard line. Actually, inside the... 45 to the 41. So Pegues a couple of good carries. Travis Sherman, the middle linebacker, knocked him out there. But some more emotion. Maybe some more confidence for this Clemson squad. Boy, Pegues has come off the bench and give this club a lift. You know, Clemson has five tailbacks. Not one of them had ever started a college game until last week. Pegues is playing with a sprained ankle, a bad knee, but he looks terrific. The numbers are huh? Pegues, not bad at all during the first half. He gets a breather. Priester now in there, and they're going to throw him a little flare. He's got some green. Dances a gain of about eight on first down, and Clemson moving the football here. These fans over the last five to six years have waited for a big chance like this. It's a well-designed play. They slip him out. They're in a zone coverage. they got to get help from the backside. Clyde Christensen, the offensive coordinator here, is trying to spread the field. So far, it's worked in this drive. Timeout on the field will take one as well. Clemson on a drive here in the second quarter. You look at what they've done against Florida State lately. 149 minutes, two seconds. They have gone without scoring against Florida State. And this crowd... Maybe sensing a change in that streak. Raymond Priester will long set back. They give it to him, and he's got a little bit of a hole. He gets the first down inside the 30. But knocked down by Sam Howard, who may have saved a big game. You mentioned the offense, Terry. This offense for Clemson was terribly inconsistent last year, according to the coaches. And they say consistency is not only the key this season, but especially today. Well, they've been able to move the ball. They had the fumble and a couple of mistakes for the kicking game, but they have moved it. And that's you. That's a young team will do that. Here's Pegues back in, trying the right side, trying to get outside. And a gain of about seven on first down. Sean Hamlet, the free safety, number 18, made the stop. But, you know, this Clemson offense right now, staying on the ground and moving the football. Clemson now trying to spread the field from sideline to sideline and really spread the defense thin and then run the ball. They come out in passing formations. Now watch how wide they go. They're going sideline to sideline here. 
four receivers in, and Priester back in for Begee. Priester straight ahead. Close to a first down at the 20. And they're spreading the field, but right now content to just hand it off to Begee, pitch it to Priester, use their tailbacks. Down Wilson. Down Priester. And they are just short. So it brings up third down and about a yard. Third one, but you're in the four down area. They don't get it here. They know they can come back and forth. That'll be an interesting decision for Tommy West. You go or kick a field goal. I think at this point of the game, down 14 points, I'd try to go and get the first. Priester bounces off a man, and he's got the first down and much more. Raymond Priester with a touchdown for Clemson. That's Florida State. That's exciting, isn't it? Uh. There is no question that the fans in this town, we've been here since Thursday, and you talk to the players and coaches, they felt that they had a great chance of winning this game. And they're right back in it for the extra point by Sauve. So the emotion on the side of the Clemson Tigers right now here in Death Valley. Don't forget, coming up on the Prudential Halftime Report, John Saunders will have scores and highlights from all of today's action. And Robin Roberts on Notre Dame's fall from grace. A loss last week to Northwestern. And, of course, later on today, right after our game, they take on Purdue at West Lafayette. And a very good Purdue team as well. It's an all start in the backfield. Big test for the Irish on the road. 14 to 7 here. Florida State with the lead and Clemson with the drive for a touchdown to get back in this thing. Defense started it with a turnover. The offense, seven plays, six runs. And ran it right down and scored. See if that little goose now to the rest of the team can really pick everybody up. See if it carries over into special teams here. Boy, this place is rocking. The crowd's in it. 82,000, probably about 79 in orange shirts. And a little pooch kick now from Survey. Feel it at the 30. And that's Pooh Bear ahead to the 42. So the pooch to Pooh Bear. And great field position for Florida State here. I'm going to take you down to the field, check in with John Spagnola. John? Thanks, Terry. And talking to Bobby Bowden yesterday about last year's game against Clemson, which Florida State only won 17 to nothing. He lamented that he got a little too conservative on offense got in the scoring area and they weren't able to even get field goals out of it. Interesting to see what's going to happen now with Clemson getting on the board and only a seven point win. Will Bowden open it up or will he get conservative like he did last year? Terry. Uh, John, it's a good point too and they have not been challenged in an ACC game in a long, long time. 25 straight wins. Here's Rock Preston across the left side and playing to the ground. At the 45 after a gain of about three, Raymond White. The defensive end, number 97, was there first. You know, that's a good point he makes. We talked about that in the keys to the game, get everybody involved early, because that conservative game against Clemson last year had one of their worst games of the season here. Only one at 17 to nothing. And as you mentioned, now with just a seven-point lead, we'll see if the defensive Clemson can really make this a tight fit situation for the Knowles. So a game of three on first down brings up second and seven. And Cannell trying to change the play, which is not easy with this crowd. And batted down. Big Lamar Simpson, number 99, out of Rock Hill, South Carolina, got the hand in the air. Just watch 
wings number 99. He's six foot three. He's got a huge wingspan and he uses it all here. Here comes 99, right of your screen, go up. Cannell has to throw over him, no chance. That's just a bull rush with a big wingspan. Cannell rolling out on third and seven, a lot of time. Incomplete overthrown, the intended receiver, Andre Cooper, who was well covered. Dawkins was there. Andre Humphrey was there. How about McClellan? There's a talented athlete right there. He started football, he starts at baseball. Watch number nine on this. Again, the ball is high and it's well covered. Number nine goes up at its highest point, used the sideline almost like an extra man, the 12th man on defense. And Clemson has now called a timeout. So as they get set to receive a punt, they're down by only a touchdown here in the second quarter. Clemson's last time out because they only had 10 men on the field waiting to receive the punt. So again, no mistake with the kicking game. They played well elsewhere, though. And here's Andre Humphrey fielding the punt of his own 13. Down to the knee at the knee of about two yards. Return of about two yards to the 17-yard line. So a 41-yard punt, two-yard return. You know, for Tommy West, though, this has to be a positive sign. They've had a lot of breakdowns here. They've had penalties, turnovers. 10 men on the field instead of the 11. They let the ball hit the ground on punts, and yet they're still down to the number one team in the country by just seven points. And I guarantee you, he will hammer that home in the locker room at halftime. And they've stayed on the ground, especially in the last drive. We'll see if they stick with the running game here. Three receivers, Pagese and a tailback, and here is Lamont. Bounces off one man, gets ahead for about a yard. Not what much going on there? Terry, the one thing that surprises me to this point is Clemson's not using a lot of the clock. They wanted to let that play clock go down to three or four seconds. Really kind of shorten this game. They haven't been able to do that. For instance, the last couple of snaps they've gotten with 16 seconds on the play clock. Then as a player, does the crowd and the emotion sometimes make you do things that you wouldn't ordinarily do or want to do? I don't know if it ever hurts you. I know it can help you. It gets that adrenaline flowing if it's the home crowd. Straight ahead across the 20 to the 21 yard line. The only time a crowd can really hurt you with the noise is if you can't hear a change or a check off or a snap count. It is hot here today as well. The fans are out, of course. The fans are all orange. One of the best crowds in the country. Football, here's a way of life. This is college football. Third down and six, Priester in. Green trying to throw. Over the middle, and did he get his man? That's Tony Grit Horn at the 31. They call it a reception, but there is a flag down. That's in the area thrown of contact. And they're going to call it offensive. That receiver uses his hands to get an advantage, and there is contact after five yards. He'll call it. Pass interference on the offense. Half the distance to the goal. Third down. So another mistake. That's cleansing up. Look at Tommy. He has this team so well prepared. They're so confident. He's just trying to get a break here. What a personable guy for the time over the last couple of days. And everyone knows about Bobby Bowden and how outgoing and how personable he is. But Tommy West here is one over the fans. After a tough situation here, too, Danny Ford with all the success he had and, and Ken Hatfield through some time to, you know, he was 8-3 that last year. And, uh, and Tommy came in with 5-6 and six last year, but don't worry about him, folks. He'll have him win it here in a hurry. Yep. Third and 17 with the way to Priester. It's about three, and that's about it. And a little more room to punt the ball away. Out of Rebo. Made it back here. Howard were there to make the stop. Kenya Brooks having a word with Tommy West on the sideline. 
and Dean Feaster to the team. Dean Feaster back deep for Florida State. Feaster watches it bounce. And close to hitting a Florida State man, and Feaster falls on it at the 40-yard line. A dangerous play for the Seminoles, and that's where they'll take over at the Clemson 40. And let's take it to New York, check in with John Saunders. John? Terry, Nebraska against Michigan State. A couple of big stores. Lawrence Phillips in the first half already, 14 carries, 146 yards, and two touchdowns. But the bigger story, Tommy Frazier, the Heisman Trophy candidate, takes a knee to the thigh. He has a deep thigh bruise. He has left the game, gone to the locker room. We're not sure if he'll return. Brooke Berenger now in at quarterback for Tommy Frazier. 17-7 is the score. Terry. All right, John. So Tommy Frazier, after what he went through last year, and now perhaps another injury. But the good news for Nebraska is I don't think you lose a whole lot when you put in with Berenger. Warwick Dunn through the middle, bouncing off. Inside the 20. Still on his feet. Trying to get to the end zone and inside at the three-yard line. A look at certainly one of the Heisman Trophy candidates this year, one of the hardest guys to tackle in all of college football, a 35-yard game. He's got world-class speed. He could have consecutive 1,000-yard rushing seasons through that 55-yard option pass last week. Watch him here, though. You know, this guy is special. Breaks a tackle with strength and then takes it outside with speed. The dive by Kubera ahead for a couple of yards and down to the two-yard line. Oh, you just can't tackle the guy, you know? And, and coming into the year, the, the first team for Florida State, the defensive team, found that out. You know, Dunn is a great story, too. After a conversation with Bobby Bowden and Mark Rick in the parking lot, proved he was durable. He asked for the ball, went up to the coaches, talked to him after practice one day. He says, can you just give me the ball and watch what I do with it? They gave it to him. He touched the ball more than 20 times per game the last six games of bingo. He's a Heisman Trophy candidate. Absolutely. Second and goal at the three. Here's Warwick trying to get to the end zone. Near the goal line, did he get in? Yes, touchdown. Backside officials already signaled the touchdown. The guy on the play has it. Touchdown. We'll go with him. Warwick Dunn into the end zone, and Florida State now up 20-7. to seven. And, of course, that started with a good field position at the 40-yard line of Clemson. So they take it about 40 yards in. Scott Bentley, who missed a couple of field goals last year against Clemson inside the 35, and lost his job for a while to Dan Mowry. Now was perfect on the afternoon with the extra point. Well, Dunn ought to go over and shake hands with Pearsall and Tyre because they threw key blocks. He just follows the old Tyre number 66 and it dives into the end zone. He went over 100 yards last week. He's off to a big start. Look at this block. Stop it right there. I mean, this is incredible right here. You get Pearsall and Tyre out there. All Dunn now has to do is just dive for that corner. That's fantastic. That's why they're number one in the country. You get guys running like that. Tires, 6'5", 275. Pearsall's 250. That's a lot of beef to lead you around that corner. Now, you've got a guy named Pooh Bear, too, at fullback. 280 pounds plus uh, starting out the play. Some big people to run behind, and this man can run. So it's 21-7, to 7, and you see Warwick Dunn trying to... Stay away from the effects of the sun on the sideline. It is hot and humid here in Clemson. Well, that's a cool fact, too. It's got coldness in it. The FSU team, number one of the nation, just blessed with a good blend of experience, speed, talent, and a sweet schedule this year. Now they've got, what, eight games in the state of Florida this year. Sure do. It replaced Notre Dame with Central Florida. Of course, Florida at Gainesville would be the big, the big hurdle for them. Bentley to kick it off again. And here is Wyatt. The outside. And a blocker and knocked down at the 44-yard line. So another fine return by Antoine Wyatt. Returns it 41 yards in Clemson. Good field position again. A lot going on for Clemson here. A lot going on in New York. We check in with John Saunders on Texas Tech and Penn State. John? Terry, Penn State is struggling following a fumbled punt. 
Debbie Lethridge takes over for Texas Tech and finds Fields Goldville 20 yards. And Tech right now leads it 14-7. to We'll keep you updated. Back to you, Terry. Number 14 in the country, Penn State. Down by a touchdown at this point. Here's Pegues looking for room. And they're not going to find a whole lot. Up to the 49-yard line. Robert Hammond was there. Samari Roll was there. Now next Saturday at 3.30 Eastern on ABC's College Football, Tennessee battles SEC rival Florida. Pittsburgh takes on Texas. We will be there, our trio. Other regional action as well. Check your local listings for the game in your area and call your local cable operator for the games available on pay-per-view. That's next Saturday here on ABC Sports. And we will be in Austin. Looking forward to it. Another great college football scene. Second and six, Emory Smith maybe gets a yard. Number 18, Emory Smith. Stopped by Tom Rebel. And Julian Pittman as well. Priester's got 51 yards rushing. Pekis comes in with a fresh leg. They try to put him on the corner, bounce him up inside as well. Tell you what, they've had pretty good success running against Florida State. At 130 yards rushing. Clemson is 78-4-1 since 1978 when the Tigers gained 250 yards or more on the ground. That's how important the running game is here. Oh, for years they've been an option team. Now, uh, certainly Tommy Russ would like to balance that out some, and they throw here on third, and that ball is thrown behind Antoine Wyatt. And he had him open as well. Demetro Stevens, middle linebacker on the coverage. And there's the teaching that goes on in the sidelines with a young quarterback. Telling him not to wait, just get back and fire. Don't aim it. Just react. He's a good athlete. Let it go. Green now 4 of 12 for 36 yards. Macanelli with another punt and a good one. Deep Easter back at his own nine yard line and calls for the fair catch. So a good punt by McAnally in tough field position for Florida State right now. Tommy West hoping to hang on here in the last 5-16 of the first half. He's seen his team play pretty well, but Bobby Bowden's offense awfully explosive. And here is Dennis Andrews ahead for maybe two. Stops at the 12-yard line by number 41, Anthony Simmons. See, Terry, Tommy West now is going to keep a close eye on that clock. You've got 5.02 to go. This is the worst field position for Florida State today. If you can get the defense to make a stop here and make them punt, then he's going to have good field position and maybe can reel this thing in a little bit before the half. Now, well, Florida State has had good field position. They started the last drive at the 40-yard line of Clemson. Only Clemson's defense is playing that bad, especially if you look at the young linebacking core with a couple of freshmen in there, a first-year player from Patrick Sapp, who was the quarterback last year, and only McCoy is the only veteran. Halfback option. Gunn throws down the field. Cooper covered well by Dexter McLean. They threw it for 55 yards last week against Duke, and this time well covered by the secondary. Terry, you're right, well covered. Dunn didn't do a very good job. As soon as he got it, he showed pass, halfback option pass, but the corners really stayed with their assignment, never came up to stop the run. Red pass, stayed with pass, and made a nice play. So third and eight, and the crowd again to its feet. Four receivers in for Florida State, but they give it to Doug. Not even close. Ahead for three, that's it. And Clemson holds. Andre Carter was in there. Carlos Curry was there. And they're excited here at Death Valley. Sean Liss again back in the front, right about his old goal line. Low kick, here's Antoine Wyatt at his 45. Has a seed. And caught by the ankles at the 42-yard line. 31-yard punt, 14-yard return. Don't forget, coming up after our game, the Fighting Irish travel to West Lafayette to take on the Purdue Boilermakers, a long-time rivalry with those two clubs. And of course, 
Notre Dame trying to bounce back from last week's loss to Northwestern and Purdue with a big win over West Virginia last week. And a solid club. Clemson first and ten. Here's Raymond Priester, the tailback. Bounces away from a couple and gets to the 41. Number 27. A rain of maybe a yard, yard and a half, and John Spagnola has some news. Thanks. Terry, last week against West Carolina, uh, the football team for Clemson actually ran a two-minute drill. Tommy West was stopped going off the field by a fan and said he's been around for 100 years and he has never seen a two-minute drill run by Clemson. We'll see if they go to the shotgun and try to get this ball in the end zone. Well, they've run that option, kept it on the ground for years and years. Here's Priester keeping it on the ground, and he gains maybe three down to the 36-yard line. Peter Bulware, the defensive end out of Columbia, South Carolina, made the hit. I'm not sure they have to go to anything more hurried up than they've been doing. I mean, they run a pretty good pace, pretty good rhythm anyway. You still have three minutes to go in the half. You just want to make sure that you move the football and I think right now they're playing for a field goal as much as a touchdown. They want to position themselves, try to get points on the bar board regardless because this is their best field position of the day. Best starting field position. Clemson has scored better than Florida State on third downs today. Third and about four. The option out of the eye. Green to keep it. And he has the first down inside the 30. Good decision by Milan Green to keep it that time. Oh, what a great read it was. He saw Daryl Bush. He came up and actually committed to the pitch man. Once he did that, he cut it up. Now, he's going to take it right down the line of scrimmage. He's right now reading. All right, here comes the defensive end. C-45, boom, commitment. Now, turn it up. That's a great read because as soon as 45 made that commitment, Crockett was out of the play. You turn it up under Crockett, 45, and you make the first. 218 and counting. First down at the 29. Runs are trying to see something positive happen here before they go to the locker room. McGee's is deep in the backfield. He gets the ball and bounces off of Henry Crockett and stops after a couple of yards. A big hit by Crockett. The brother of Zach Crockett, last year's fullback. Gain of two yards on the play. Second and eight the 27. All you have to do now is get another 10 yards, and you're in Savay's territory right now, the field goal kicker. And listen to the hit here. Yeah, see, so you want to be a college football player, huh? Yeah, well, we told you, Pegues has that bumper pool style of running. He gets tagged, bounces off, it's going. Four receivers in, green the throw here on second and eight. Scrambling, looking, dancing out of bounds. Well, he got out of the grasp of a couple of tacklers, but under pressure the entire way. And Good coverage in the secondary. Yeah, he made a great decision that time not to throw. He really wanted to throw that ball, kept looking before he crossed the line of scrimmage, but a good coverage. He read that, didn't put it up for an interception. Uh, it's tough to get a young guy like this with only seven starts to be this disciplined. Look, he wants to throw. He feels the pressure again. Looks like he's going to throw it and finally says, nope, I'll keep it, keep it safe, make sure we don't turn it over. Well, they need about seven here on third down. They picked it up a moment ago. The shotgun is green. Priester in the backfield. Green to run. And brought down at the 22 shy of the first down. A nice play of the Florida State defense because he did have some running room. That was a designed quarterback draw. Now, do you go for it here? Would you need one, maybe two yards? Or do you go for the field goal? I say you've got to go for the field goal. Sebae's longest is 45. This will be just about 40 yards, maybe a little less. And Clemson will call the timeout to talk it over. But Tommy West wants a moment decide what he would like to do. Well, he's got 57 seconds to work with, which is plenty of time. Again, Sebae's longest field goal is 45. This one will be, oh, just about 42. So it's within his range. And it's a long two yards Clemson needs for a first. Okay, y'all go do a little stuff, get y'all pumped up for half time, get me going with a good feeling. So just under a minute to go here in the in the first half and you know this when you look at momentum as much as anything and the way you feel going to the locker room a huge decision and uh, a huge play perhaps to help close out the first half 
Cervais longest, as you said, is 45. He's an interesting guy. He's always wanted to kick for Clemson. Nelson Welch, all-ACC kicker and punter the last couple of years, has had the job. And Cervais, actually a baseball pitcher and played for the Red Sox organization in the last year. Oh, you're right. He, he missed back to play football. Yeah. He, he missed spring ball because of the baseball situation. The only one he's missed this year really was a short one. Within 29 yards, he's got a chance now. This will be just under 40 yards. It'll be about 38 yards. So the older Travis Harvey will put it down at the 28-yard line. Plenty of distance, but Survey misses the 38-yard field goal attempt. And it stays 21-7 Florida State. Let's take it to New York and check in with John. Well, Terry, Joe Paterno had been complaining all week. His team's practices were lackluster, and it's showing today. Zebby left with seven yards to Byron Hanspard. They missed the point after, but Texas Tech leads it 20-7. Terry. John, last week you tell us Notre Dame gets beat by Northwestern. Now you've got... Texas Tech all over Penn State. Not a bad start to the college football season. Uh, how about Notre Dame, though? In its last eight games, 2-5-1, and one, with the only two wins coming over Air Force and Navy. Notre Dame struggling a little bit right now. Would have never believed it. Don't forget, eventual halftime is still. Roger Roberts will have to be thrown on Notre Dame. And here's the reverse to Philip Riley, almost down in the backfield, but he gets away. And out to the 30, and flags coming from all over the place now. I think every official who had a flag in his pocket threw one that time. Yeah, whatever happened, I think they certainly got the attention of the striped shirts. Looked like Clay Shover. Hey, hey, defense, hold him. Hey, hold him. And a clip hey, against hey, Florida State, hey, and they'll call that back. Hold him. Hey, hold him. Hey, hey, defense, hold him. Hey, hold that down. Well, you know, Tommy West, we've hey, talked about defense, his thoughts him. in the first hey, half, maybe, but... Uh, on the other side, how about Bobby Bowden? What do you think he's thinking right now? On the offense, half the distance to the goal, first down. How about his team's performance, Tim? Well, you know, they've had some great things happening, but they too have had breakdowns, and that's what Bobby doesn't want. Watch the end of this play. Keep an eye on number 53 on the reverse. They bring it back. Here's your contain. Your contain man gets caught inside. Now you got the big guys out front. And again, the broken uh, tackle here. But watch 50 coming out of the left of your screen. You won't see it, but it was clip the block in the back. So it backs him up. It's first and 18 now. And we'll see if they use the 42 seconds. And if you know Florida State, you know they probably will. They pitch it right back. And that is the halfback Rock Preston in there now for Warwick Dunn. And you saw Warwick Dunn with a big gain on the same play earlier in the game. Well, you've got to tell your guys right now defensively, just be play solid. Just go to base defense, play solid. You've got 20 seconds left. You've got probably one play. They won't stop the clock. You don't want to stop it. Just don't let anything big happen to you here. Matter of fact, 10 seconds, they won't even come out. Yep, and that will be the last play of the first half. Number one, Florida State with the lead here at halftime. But the fans in Death Valley still excited about where their squad is. Two touchdowns down, but they played pretty well. And Bobby Bowden's team going to the locker room here at halftime with a nice lead. But, uh, you know, the kicking game very important here in the first half. Clemson with some mistakes. And maybe Bobby Bowden fortunate to have the 14-point lead. Well, I think very much Florida State is in control. I don't think there's any question about that, but it was a turnover that led Clemson to that touchdown. And offensively, that's the best execution that Clemson had all day. When they had that turnover, they just jammed it down inside. The running backs picked up. And on that one drive, it went seven plays. They ran the ball six times. It was 69 yards, took it two minutes and 40 seconds. And, you know, they've got almost 150 yards rushing already. That's, that's pretty big for Clemson. Well, neither of these teams were tested last week either. Florida State with the 70-26 win over Duke and 55 to 9 with the score Clemson over Western Carolina so they're finding out a lot about their clubs here in week two as well and you only find out so much during your camp and then you play someone else and if you know it's a blowout victory you 
need to play someone who's going to test you a little bit. Uh, keep in mind, too, there's a great tradition here at Clemson. I mean, they aren't afraid of Florida State. Uh -huh. I mean, since 1986, Clemson finished in the top 25 seven times, six bowl wins in there. So seven in nine years, that's not bad. I mean, they've got a tremendous, tremendous tradition, and they had a good recruiting year, and consequently, you've got 54 freshmen and sophomores out of the 84 scholarship guys that are dressed. Now, last year for Clemson, nine freshmen played or started and, uh, you know, spent most of the time on the field. I mean, think about that. That's awfully scary to go to battle with five, with nine freshmen every time out. And this year, with all the underclassmen, Tommy West in his second year, more experienced, but they're not that much older. Give Miles Aldridge, the defensive coordinator for Clemson, a lot of credit, too. Came out, was mixing his defenses, put a lot of different looks in front of uh, Cannell. And Cannell really had trouble there early on trying to read, and it took him out of rhythm. The number one Florida State with the lead here at halftime over Clemson. This is still a ball game, folks. Do not go anywhere. It's 21 to 7. The Seminoles with the lead right now over the Clemson Tigers. And Tim mentioned the pride and the tradition here. Tommy West says it's in the water in Clemson. It is just natural down here. All the success they have had and the great football players who have gone on to the NFL. And uh, I think he'll get them back there. I, you know, they've struggled the last couple of years. And he came in, won the Peach Bowl a couple of years ago and uh, then went five and six last year, but certainly a different outlook this year. Florida State, 25 consecutive conference wins. Breaks a record that we set at Maryland. We were over 20 consecutive ACC wins. So far, the last couple of years, they have been dominant. 74 to nothing in the last two games between these two teams. 21 to seven, Florida State at the half. Prudential halftime report coming up next from New York. CFA College Football on ABC Sports. Brought to you by Pontiac and your local Pontiac dealer. Welcome back to Death Valley here in Clemson, South Carolina. 21-7, Florida State with a two-touchdown lead here at the half. And as they left the field, John Spagnola cut off with head coach Tommy West of Clemson. Tommy, you're battling the number one team in the country pretty even so far. Basically, we got to start making some plays. We've got people there. Uh, and we just haven't been able to convert and make the plays that we have to make. It's there. We just got to make plays. I think our defense is fighting about as hard as they can. Clemson playing pretty well in the first half of play defensively, but a couple of big plays have hurt them. Don't forget, coming up after our game, Notre Dame takes on Purdue at West Lafayette, Indiana. Purdue with a big win last week over West Virginia. And Notre Dame, of course, with the loss to Northwestern. So the Irish trying to bounce back on the road today. Now Terry Gannon, Tim Brandt, and John Spagnola here in a very hot, humid Death Valley. 82,000 fans, most of them wearing orange, and Clemson still in this game, 21 to seven, and they deferred after winning the toss, and so they will receive to open up the second half. Scott Bentley gets us underway here in the second half. Antoine Wyatt at his own eight yard line to the near side. Looking for room, not going to find any. Dropped at the 25-yard line. Florida State comes up with it, but his knee was down, so it'll be Clemson ball. Boy, that was close, though. And number 47, Bernard Crawford. In on the hit and trying to get the turnover as well. So Clemson takes over first and 10 at its own 25-yard line. And they were able to move the ball on the ground in the first half, Tim. They sure were almost 150 yards rushing if you're just joining us. Clemson had a chance to pull within, uh, well, they had a field goal miss at the end of the first half, 21 to seven. It was 14 to seven, most of the first half. And straight ahead, Raymond Priester bounces to the near sideline, has room across the 40. And down at the 48 yard line. So a big play from scrimmage to open up the second half, a gain of 24 for the tailback, Raymond Priester, Samari Roll made the stop. And we do apologize for the difficulty we had at the beginning of this half. Technical difficulties, but everything is in order right now, and we should be fine throughout the rest of the second half. Boy, can Priester motor for a guy that size. He's 225 pounds, got around the corner, looked like a sprinter. So Clemson, Clemson first and 10. At midfield, here's Priester on the pitch the grass from a couple of tacklers and a good run again 
but a six-yard gain for Raymond Priester. Interesting adjustment that time by Florida State. They took their defensive ends, Marion and Bullware, and actually put them outside the tackles, trying to force things back in. And when they did that, of course, Green came down the line and pitched wide. Up front, the Tigers doing a pretty good job against that defensive front of Florida State. Boy, this is what you want, too. Second down and four, you can pass or run, keeps the defense on its heels. Three receivers in the max in the eye. Priester straight ahead, still motoring and close to a first down. He's about to the 41-yard line. Andre Wadsworth, the Priester nose guard, number 85, in on this tackle. Nice job by Crockett, too, because otherwise he gets the first down. And Crockett actually pulled him down near the stakes. He'll be about a yard short. Crockett, a junior out of Pompano Beach, Florida. And the crowd to its feet now on third and just under two yards. Raymond Priester ahead for the first down inside the 40 to the 39-yard line. Tyrant Marion, number 86, stopped him there, but not before he made the change move. A lot of action left here in Clemson, but of course coming up next, don't forget Notre Dame at Purdue in West Lafayette, Indiana. A big one as the Irish uh, rebound after the loss to Northwestern last week. Interesting feature by Robin Roberts at halftime. Notre Dame really struggling 2-5-1 and one for the Irish over the last eight games with victories only over Air Force and Navy. Well, who would ever think that would happen with all the athletes they have? Yep. They've lost a number of assistant coaches over the years, but uh, they feel like they can get the athletes in the South Bend. And the Florida State defense wraps up Priester in the backfield. Andre Wadsworth, Robert Hammond in there. Well, I'm not sure. They needed one yard for the first down, and they went wide. So Florida State brings its strong safety. to the shotgun for the first time here in the second half. Long time to throw. And that's dangerous. And it's picked off. Number 56, Sam Powers, with the interception. And again, the mistakes come back to haunt Clemson. They start to move the football to open up the second half. And then the pass picked off after the tip. Florida State playing with a lot more confidence defensively. They're much more aggressive and they've made some interesting adjustments. They're staying wide. They're bringing pressure and they were in a zone that time, and the tip resulted in an interception. Nice defensive series. You have to believe that Tommy West in the locker room mentioned how important it was to make a drive, put some points on the board to open up the second half, and now another crucial turnover. That's a pretty good drive, one. Got yeah. it first. Yeah. First and 10 at the 31 now for Florida State. And early in the first half, on the fumble, after the fumble by Neilon Green, they drove down the field and scored. Let's see if they take advantage again. Straight ahead is done for a gain of maybe a yard and a half, two yards. And Josh Spagnola down on the field with some news. Spags? Terry, I talked to Bobby Bowden and Danny Cannell coming out at halftime, and they don't believe Clemson's done anything to stop them. They believe they have hurt themselves with penalties, misassignments, drop balls, bad passes, and they feel like they can move the football. They just straighten all that out. Another quick note, I see an injury on the field here, but Andre Cooper, the wide receiver, is taking IVs at halftime. As soon as uh, they take care of that matter, he'll be joining the lineup for the Seminoles. Terry? All right, John. Andre Cooper last week, a big day over Duke. Nine uh, catches for 155 yards. And right now, Carlos Curry, the middle guard for Clemson, down on the field. I think John makes an excellent point there. And that's the way the Knowles should be. I mean, they, these guys really did hurt themselves in that first half. Yeah, Tim Brandt wants to find out about his old college school, Maryland. Let's go to John Saunders. All right, Terry, North Carolina facing the Maryland Terrapins at midfield here. Brian Cummings, 50 yards. He hooks up with Mansell Johnson. The two-point conversion is good, and right now the Terps are up 18-10. to 10. Terry, back to you. John, that's huge, too, with Milanovic out, the suspension for gambling from the NCAA. Mm -hmm. Of course, Cummings coming in. That's a former defensive player that moved over to quarterback, and he's played well. What about North Carolina? Last week, the loss, you know, they dominated the football game for at least a half, and uh, mistakes hurt them. They lost to Syracuse, now losing again. Yeah, Matt Brown's done a nice job down there, though. That's a solid ball club. Look at what took place in the first half. 147 yards rushing for Clemson, but uh, mistakes hurt them as well. Danny Cannell not having the best of days. To the air, Philip Riley, and almost picked off. 
Dexter McQueon, who has had a good day in the secondary, step for step, and almost had that one. You know, that's like you draw it up on the board. McLean actually funneled him to the sidelines and then kept him pinned there, played him inside out, and he actually then became the receiver. The only man really with a chance to catch that ball. And it brings up third and a long nine. Hubert Williams and Warwick Dunn out of the eye and Cannell on the play action, and down he goes. Patrick sat, wrapped him up. Along with number 92, Brett Williams, and a big sack on third and long for Clemson. How about that? Watch number three. Here he is right here. Let him go. Turn him loose. Former quarterback. This time last year, he was the strong-arm Clemson quarterback. This time, he's going after one. He says when you get a good hit on a guy, it feels just like a sack. He wouldn't have known the last couple of years. He was playing QB. Walked on the basketball team this year. Antoine Wyatt at his own 29-yard line with the fair catch. So the defense holds once again. They're playing well. And the offense takes over at the 29. At the top of the telecast, we talked about some of the keys to the game. Florida State last week got 10 receivers involved in the game. Only four here today. That's why they're not blowing Clemson out of here. And they've had a lot of mental mistakes. You heard Bobby Bowden tell John Spagnola that earlier. For Clemson, be unpredictable. Well, they haven't shortened the game, but they have been unpredictable. They've been very, very good mixing plays and spreading the field. And then funnel clog and deflate. I'm telling you, they're doing that, forcing things back inside. Dunn and Preston only have a combined 82 yards. Not completely deflated, but uh, certainly some air out of the bubble. On first and 10, Green to throw. Looking up top for Joe Woods. And broken up by Samari Rowe, and here comes the flag. And Tim, the right hand was there with the tip, but the left hand was in the back. Well, you're right. You sound like you played some defensive back. That's exactly the way to play it. Might want to even tug his jersey a little bit. That's a good play if you don't get caught. Here he gets caught. This ball is well thrown, but watch number two. That's Samara, and he's got that hand on the back. Comes in, makes that contact. Looked like a great play. Actually looked like old Deion Sanders, but look at that left hand wrapped around him. You cannot do that. That's a good call. Step for step with Joe Woods. But Clemson goes to the air after keeping it on the ground time after time. And uh, they go for the big play and get a big call. So that'll be 15 yards. First down, move the chain. Yep. So they pick it up at the 44. Three receivers in and they work out of the eye a long count. On to Gies ahead for maybe a yard that's about it well i like that rule a lot you know when you think about pass interference you think all right it's going to be at the spot of the foul but college football goes five and 15 so they come back if it's longer than 15 of course it's a 15 yard penalty which that one was i like that rule a lot as opposed to where the foul happens at the spot of the yes. foul that's correct well that's the way it used to be and uh, i think i agree with you because you know oftentimes you see in desperation, they'll throw it up in the air and get a call like that. Now it's 15 instead of the entire yardage. Second down and nine at the 45. Green on the option. There goes Pegues. Hit, spins, knocked out of bounds at midfield. Iron Cases, the boundary corner, knocked them out of bounds. And let's go down to the field and check in with John. Terry and Tim, I could not disagree with you guys more about uh, the pass interference rule. Uh, certainly, Clemson would have had the ball at the 30-yard line going in. I think it encourages defensive backs on long plays to interfere if they That's think they get like beat it. at all. John, you're an offensive guy. See, I'm a former defensive guy. That's how you guys are ruining the game, Tim. No, you start penalizing the guy down there, putting where it is. The guys are going to start playing tentatively back there. We like to beat on you a little bit. We'll settle this later. <laughs> what do you expect from a guy from Yale, huh? Third and four out of the shotgun for Green. Marcus Hint with a nice catch up in the air, and he's got a first down. Marlon Green on the coverage to the tackle, but not before. Green completes one for the number first down. And it looks like Seven Smith, the strong safety, is injured for Florida State. He's back at the 40-yard line. Seven Smith. And they're working on his left leg. Also, while they work on him, it's been a, both medical staffs have been really hard at work for Florida State offensive guard. Lewis Tyre is suffering from cramps. 
He's been given an IV. John talked about the IVs earlier. Receiver Andre Cooper was given an IV at halftime to alleviate heat problems. Very hot today. They want to get that uh, get those fluids in them. As you mentioned, this looked like a leg injury, but they give a lot of credit to uh, All right. Nalon Green, the sophomore quarterback, because he's really playing with a lot of composure. Well, he's gone through a long learning process. I mean, last year, maybe played earlier than they really wanted him to, but uh, they've had some problems at quarterback the last couple of years. Patrick Sapp was there, Lewis Solomon there, and they've made that transition a bit from an option team to more of a balanced team throwing and running. And uh, Elon Green learned a lot in the last four games of last year, five games, and now... Uh, Playing awfully well against Western Carolina last week and now running against Forest State. Yeah, talking to Clyde Christian, the offensive coordinator, he says, Yeah, we played him earlier than we wanted to, but now we're glad we did because mm -hmm. he's got some experience. Green changing the play at the line. The option, here goes Raymond Priester and cuts back at the 40 and knocked to the ground. Right at the 40 yard line. Number 27, Raymond Priester. That play's picking up about five yards per pop. We got a good block that time by Tony Horn. Vernon Crawford knocked him to the turf. Priester having a good day. 16 carries for 94 yards. He also has a touchdown run of 21 yards. A gain of five. And this time, Emery Smith breaks up the middle. They can't get him to the ground. To the 11 yard line, a big play to the fullback Smith. The strong safety Robert Hammond saves the touchdown. A gain of 28 on the play. Emory Smith, the brother of Emmett. I'm going to tell you something, folks. We told you he's bigger than his brother Emmett for the Dallas Cowboys. He'll show it here and he'll use it. 238 pounds, a huge hole opens up. Now watch, he'll use that weight to go ahead and drag tackle him. It'll take him on head on. Watch this. Boom. Running his own guys over. Big, strong, <laughs> fast, explosive runner. Doesn't matter what color jersey you got. You get in the way, you're going to the ground. And a mix-up in the backfield. And Smith barely did get that handoff. Green ran right into him. So does Renard Wilson. As I say, the biggest, fastest, strongest players right now are being recruited out of Florida, certainly the Smith family, out of Pensacola, Florida. Add to that. So second and 12 after the loss of two. The Clemson knocking on the door. The option, bring to keep it not going anywhere. You know, I think Green confused himself there. He forgot the play and actually was shocked when it went to the left. Anyway, right into Daryl Bush, too. The middle linebacker. Spags has something else on the field, John. We saw Shevin Smith uh, go out of the game. That was late cramps. I'm on the sidelines here. Sean Hamlet, the starting free safety, was also getting his uh, calves massaged with ice. Heat is taking its toll on the Seminole defense, Terry. How are you holding up, John? I feel great. Thanks a lot for asking. We got plenty of fluids for you afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> and there is Bush going off to the sideline. Had the knee injury last year. And it is hot today. Third and 13 out of the backfield. Priester trying to get away from Coward. He's not going to get there. How about the quickness of Sam Coward one-on-one -on -one with Raymond Priester? And he brought him down. That's a huge play. You know, he shared time the last two years at outside linebacker. He's a big hitter. Some think he could be the next great dominant player at Florida State. But he made a big play on Priester that time, just holding on to his jersey and showing his strength to get him down. Well, Priester, 6'1", 220. And Coward, 6'3", 239. And on again is Jeff Save. And Florida State just does get off the field. And was that 12 men on the field. Attempt of 31 yards. Down, up, and it is good. So Clemson puts three on the board. On the field goal by Seve. It's 21 to 10 for the state. Long run by Emery Smith setting up the field goal here for Clemson. And uh, Jim, what about Emery and his older brother Emmett and their running style? Well, we've talked a lot about Emmett here in the first half because of the progress that Emery's made. But take a look at him. Here's Emmett Smith when he played for the Gators down in Florida. Now, he's more of a hide-and-seek type runner, uses that explosiveness 
when he gets outside, then he puts a little dipsy doodle on you and goes inside. He's got that kind of quickness. Now let's take a look at his brother, Emery. He's a big banger. Guy's over six feet tall. He's 240 pounds. Watch this. He'll use that little move too, but then he'll just bang you and bowl you over. Big, strong guy. Of course, the 39-yard run just set up that field goal, and there's the stats for the day. Five carries, 42 yards, an average of over eight yards every time he touches it. Another run over you, then around you. And having a good day for the Tigers today, who are only trailing 21 to 10 at this point. Tommy West got to be happy about still being in this one with 6.5 left in third. Yeah, I want to bet he wants to get that ball to Smith one too. Unlike his brother Emmett, who's a hide and seek guy, he's just a seek guy. He looks for seeks you out and tries to run you over. Hard to hide when you're that big. Remain green. Back deep, waiting to kick off. Okay, I'll go. With Jeff Sabe. out to the 37 and we've seen a number of good kickoff returns today and Monday night the oldest rivalry in professional football is on ABC's NFL Monday Night Football Brett Favre and the Green Bay Packers travel to the Windy City to take on the Sean Salon and the Chicago Bears that's live Monday at 9 Eastern 6 Pacific here on ABC Sports Packers have been so good at that conference but now Dave Wonstadt has the Bears back and the Tiger in the Batman outfit today, I'm not sure I'd add any clothing. He had to take ID last week. Sure did. That, that's Mike Bays. 55 points that he does push-ups every time they score. Here's Wayne Messing with the catch out to the 48-yard line. And near a first down. So Canal hooks up with Messing. As you look at very hot, I'm sure. Mike Bates, the Tiger. You mentioned he does those push-ups after every score. Last week he did 279 of them. Can you imagine if that had been uh, Florida State? Florida State, he'd think that could do 500. That'd be his last day as the Tiger. It would have been mine. Warwick Dunn with a lot of room to the outside trying to break it. Out of bounds at the 13-yard line. You give him a little bit of room and he's going to take a lot. Lamont Evans finally knocked him out of bounds inside the 15-yard line. Boy, he's special. I'll tell you why. He'll use every block. He's never in a hurry. See, he took that first step to read. He sees the hole. Now he looks for daylight and he gets his wide receivers involved in the game. Now, you know, the big thing is once he steps out of bounds, the guys are still coming. Look, he's not going to go down. He's an impressive runner. 41-yard gain by Warwick Dunn. And, you know, you, you think you're containing him for a while, and all of a sudden he busts one at 41 yards. There's a guy that's been through a lot of adversity in his life, too. First and 10 at the 12, and there's E.G. Green on his feet, trying to get to the end zone. Touchdown, Florida State. They hit you in a hurry. Tim Clemson puts three on the board with the field goal, with Florida State with their lightning offense. Well, they had the big return, put him up near midfield. And the big play by Dunn and Bingo. There's the extra point, 28 points. Bentley puts another one on the board, and it is 28 to 10. Florida State in control here. Three plays, 62 yards, and a Florida State touchdown. It took less than 50 seconds off the clock. Danny Cannell going to E.G. Green. And Bobby Bowden's exactly right when he says it's the run that really sets up the pass for Florida State. In this case, it did. Dunn's run, and then, of course, E.G. Green just comes and hooks Bobby, under the zone, three. makes a spin move, and then just dives for the end zone. It's an outstanding balance play by E.G. Green, but it was just a basic hook pattern in front of the zone, came it set under, and then turned, spun, and scored. Well, the receivers for Florida State make something happen once they get the ball, and uh, you're right. When you've got a Warwick Dunn in the backfield, a Rock Preston in the backfield, 41-yard run by Dunn set up the touchdown. 29-year coaching career for Bobby Bowden, 20 years at Florida State, reads voraciously of world history and war. Very humorous, continued back. Won a few battles in his day. Sure has. Bentley with the kick. 
sending Antoine Wyatt back, and he launches it stale out of the end zone. So it'll be first and 10 at the 20-yard line for the Tigers, and some extracurriculars here as flags fly. It's going to be a personal foul against Florida State, I believe. They may call all setting. Well, well, there's Tigers, no reason for that. Tiger's not happy right now leaving the field, so. Middle of your screen, you see, yeah, exactly. Two guys going after it late. Number 40 is Chris McAnally. Comes up and throws the uh, forearm shiver. Okay, there it is against Florida State. And that's going to be it. That's because he huh? came up and actually what looked like a punch. McAnally threw a forearm shiver. Which is also illegal in this game. Yeah, that's what I said. It's just like a punch. <laughs> the same effect when it hits you upside the head. Same effect as the flag coming out. Dead ball. Personal foul on the kicking team. 15 yards. First down. And you know, that's what Bobby Bowden's talking about. Keep an eye on number 40 here. Here he comes right here. He'll get up and what? Boom! Right there. That's 15 yards. And that's what Bobby Bowden says. We're making too many mental mistakes. That's a mental error. And that'll frustrate Bobby Bowden. Uh, and the play is over at that point, too. I mean, there was no play, effectively. The ball sailed out of the end zone. So Clemson takes over at its own 35 now. Green to throw. Got a man near the first down marker. A gain of about nine. And so a good first down place. Marcus, Marcus Hinton on the reception. And Troy Saunders, a redshirt freshman on the tackle. Terry, this is a critical time of the ball game for that guy right there, Nelon Green. Five and a half minutes to play in the third quarter. It's 28 to 10. You've got to make something happen on this offensive series. You've got to get some points on the board. Preferably a touchdown because they're falling farther and farther behind. You can't trade field goal for touchdown and be effective. Green now 7 of 16 for 51 yards. Second and one. He's going to throw again. He's got a man wide open. Tony Hall to the end zone and Clemson back on the board. So he's excited. His teammates are excited. He stops, says, hey, guys, great. We're back in this thing. Everybody comes and celebrates with him. I got to tell you what. I'm not so sure. No, but watch Green. This is nicely done. Neilon Green, boom, just lay it up there. Jermaine is already beaten, and Horn blows by Green. Oh, Green beats Green, and Horn takes advantage. Neilon Green beats Jermaine Green. And uh, Tony Horn scores the touchdown. Tim, I have to tell you, if that's what it was called on, though, the celebration, well, there's no foul. It was more than that. You let that roll, you see about 15 guys jump on top. That's almost a delay of game. That's what they're calling about, the celebration in the end zone. If, that is, if that's the case, that's fine. But I like the rule. I, I think it's a good rule. I don't like football players taking their helmets off and whatnot. But uh, 
Well, you, you have to use common sense today. But they haven't felt that penalty yet. They'll feel it right now in the kickoff because they'll be kicking off from their own 20, which means Florida State's going to come back and get great field position. And that's why you hear the boos now from the crowd of 82,000. Look where they're kicking off from. I mean, Florida State's already in here. They're going to have great field position. So Sebae will kick off at his own 20 as Clemson has gotten back in this one. 28 to 17 with 5, 21 left in the third. You know, when you're a three-touchdown underdog and you score and get back in the ball game, you should be able to celebrate. I agree with you. Green and Preston back deep, although not that deep, at their own 20. And here's Preston at his 25. Cross to 40. And at the 45-yard line, the kicking game has hurt Clemson all day long. Take a moment, go down to the field. John Spagnola has a special guest. John? Thank you, Terry. With Norm Thaggard, an astronaut who has spent more time in space than any other American recently linked up with the Russians, and you addressed the Seminole football team last night for Bobby Bowden. What did you tell them? What I told them, John, was this game only lasts three or four hours, but the impact of it, they'll live with for the rest of their lives. Terry, call this play, and I'd like to come back and ask one more question. All right, John, the crowd may be allowing me to call this play. I'm not sure. They're on their feet here at Dead Valley. Let's just listen and watch. Boy, they're not as quiet, don't they? You're not going to bring him down with one arm. And Warwick Dunn trying to get... The Tallahassee people up on their feet, and they're here in full force. Let's go back down to Spag. Norm, compare if you will. You sat atop a launch pad. That's pretty intimidating. Now you're on the Clemson sidelines with me. What's more intimidating? No question about it being on the Clemson sidelines. Just look at the size of these guys. He can't wait get to get back to Bobby Bowden, guys. Thanks a lot, Norm. Best of luck. Well, no wonder, John. Out of the shotgun again for Canal. Here's Warwick Dunn with a lot of room. Down to the 10-yard line. And no reason to do anything but to give it to Warwick Dunn right now. He's right fast. now we're going to give it to John Saunders in New York for a moment, John. Texas Tech, as you know, has the lead over Penn State, partly because of Nittany Lion fumbles. Well, Byron Hansbard here does likewise. Coughs it up. Terry Killens recovers it, and on the next play, John Whitman, his second touchdown of the game, the Lions are coming back, 2014. All right, John, and Clemson perhaps coming back a little bit here, but Florida State knocking on the door. Warwick done with 120 yards on the day now. Here he is again, but down at the line of scrimmage. The Sioux is in there, McCrory in there, and a host of Clemson Packers. You know, not to take anything away from Florida State offensively or specifically done, but it's that penalty, that celebration penalty, that really put Clemson in a hole here and set this whole thing up. Well, they started at their own 45-yard line. That's after the, the kick from the 20. And uh, good numbers once again for Warwick Dunn. Two weeks in a row, he's gone over 100 yards. Certainly one of the Heisman Trophy candidates. Did it last week in the first half. There's his counterpart. The fake to Rock Preston. Canel to throw. Out of the end zone, he threw that one away. And he was under pressure. You know, I'll tell you something. When you've got a guy open, you've got to go to him. He breaks, makes a good break. But I'll tell you what, McLean stays with him and then reacts to the slide. Once the quarterback breaks the pocket, guys are sliding with their guys. So Antoine Edwards wasn't as open as perhaps he looks. And Brett Williams with a lot of pressure on Danny Cannell. He couldn't stand Quentin throw. Cannell changing the play now at the line on third and 10, just outside the 10. Over the middle and through the hands of Wayne Messam. Recovered by Andy Ford, number 43. He was there. That pass just through Messam's hand. Messam looks surprised. He's got great size for a receiver with excellent speed. 6'4", 210, but that one looked like it surprised him. Florida State really having a tough time on third down today. 0 for 7 on third down. 
Bentley on for a 28 yard field goal attempt. Keep in mind, Bentley had two extra points blocked last week. But this one is good. He missed two within the 35 last year against Clemson, but having a good day today. So three more on the board for Florida State. And it's 31 to 17 with just under three and a half minutes left in the third. That's CFA College Football on ABC Sports brought to you by Burger King, where you can get your burgers worth. And Red Dog Beer, bold yet smooth, unusually easy to drink. You are your own dog. Little breeze here in Clemson, South Carolina. Very little, as a matter of fact. The temperatures in the high 80s. Number of players today with the IV on the sidelines. And these are two teams that, of course, have practiced in the heat throughout fall camp. Look at this. These guys are sleigh riding, even though it's 95 degrees out. No snow, just coming. coming. <laughs> these kids are having a ball. Game, what game? That's that's one, of, one of the great scenes in college football. It, and that's what college football is all about. They have been here throughout. Today, 82,000 strong, a lot on the bank. This entire conference, Terry, football, we mentioned the national championship for Florida State, Maryland, Clemson has won, Georgia Tech, obviously. Basketball, I think, is the, yeah. the top conference in the country. And, of course, you and I have an opportunity to do a lot of ACC basketball games. And uh, without a doubt, this is a conference that really has to be proud of its product. Well, I think so. You know, I played in this league. Uh, As I with, did. Uh, at Little John, I played with the round ball. You played with the oblong ball. And uh, I think you're right. And, of course, uh, ABC doing uh, quite a bit with the ACC as well. Basketball season. We will be all over college basketball and ACC basketball this season. The only difference between you and me and the ACC is you got one of those national championships. <laughs> Many moons ago. Clemson will bring it out to the 20, and we will bring it down to John Spagnola for a moment. John? Terry Scott Bentley hit that 28-yard field goal. He had to feel good about that. You know, it was last year against Clemson that he got pulled in favor of Dan, Ma Dan Mallory for the rest of the season. He missed two field goals against Clemson, the 32 and a 28-yarder, and he had some problems with some extra points. So Scott Bentley is having a good season in kicking field goals so far this year. All right, John, last week, yeah, he struggled with the extra points. A couple of and after he's blocked, but uh, so far enjoying a good day today. Yeah. Well, first down at their own 20. And here's the pitch to Pegues trying to get outside, and actually that's Priester ahead for maybe three yards. Almost wrapped up in the backfield, but he made a positive thing out of it. Only green on the tackle. Florida State just comes in waves, you know that? They have two, three guys that come after you defensively until everybody else comes in pursuit. Well, I think those were the two big adjustments that ACC teams had to make, and maybe still have to make, is that, number one, the speed of Florida State, and two, the depth. I mean, they just wear people out. Green the throw, it's tipped up, and picked off. Picked off by Todd Rebull, and now they want to talk about it. The second time that a green pass has been tipped up in the air, the first one was picked off, and so is this one. I think that's a good call, but the crowd's going ballistic. They thought it hit the ground that he trapped it. Now they're saying, hold on, it was trapped. They're going to reconference, and Clemson's offense is coming back on the field. Hold on here. A lot of talking going on, but we're not sure what it's about. Offside on the defense, five yards, just second down. Oh, break for Clemson. Woo. So it's a moot point whether it hit the ground or not. Looked like a good interception, though. And most of the breaks have gone the other way today. So Neilon Green get another chance to try to move the ball up the field. The two waiting moments in the third quarter. Bobby a little bit upset about that on the sideline. Second and three. Here is Emery. He has the first down. You're not going to stop him with one man. Boy, how about that turnaround? Instead of first down Florida State, first down Clemson. 
still two and a half to play here in the third quarter. Well, if it goes the other way, you may close the book on it at that point because it's 31-17. You know, they have, only have about 30 yards to go ahead and push one in. Now, it's still Clemson ball. They're still very much in this game. How about the Maryland Terrapins leading North Carolina lead? You bring that one up. There's Priester ahead to the 35. Oh, he's a tough, tough runner. Bernard Wilson, number 55, stopped him there. You know, we were talking about the conference and Florida State coming in. There are those that believe that Florida State's just not right for this conference because they're dominating in football. But the bottom line here is this conference was good not only for Florida State, but was good for uh, the ACC. Mm -hmm. I mean, academically, it helps across the board because the ACC has tremendous academic standards. Football-wise, I think everybody else, their, their recruiting will improve because Florida State is in their conference. And in basketball, it helps Florida State. Well, certainly it helps them in basketball, and I happen to believe, yeah, that it helps the conference as well. Because eventually, there's no doubt the conference will get to a certain level. And here's Emory Smith. Inside the 30. Looking to go outside. To the 15-yard line, Smith with another long run. Marlon Green, the free safety, ran him down, but not before Emory Smith runs 49 yards. He's alone. Stop it right there. They're in a 46 scheme. There's only one linebacker. Once he gets by the linebacker, look at this. Open territory any way he wants to go. All right, roll it. Then he uses that speed and gets down and then uses the, the power to pull two guys over and put them inside the 20 to the 16-yard line. But that's a great play. Got by the one linebacker and just broke it. Well, usually, if a Florida State linebacker's got you one-on-one, -on -one, we saw it earlier. Sam Collard wrapping up Priester one-on-one -on -one in the open field. But that time, Smith is... Bounced right off. Here's another situation where Clemson used the whole field, spread everybody wide defensively, made them thin in the middle, and then just beat them with a quick opener. Elton Duncan, the fullback, ran the Priester. The tailback as Green hands it off to Priester, and down he goes at the 20-yard line. Henry Crockett, how quick was that? <laughs> Boy, you beat him on a big play, and they just jammed it right back at you. I mean, he was in the backfield before he even saw the handoff. I think he knew the play. Well, you know, Florida State's defense has kept the Seminoles in contention for the national championship year in and year out. And don't let anybody kid you. It's the defense that wins championships. And if Florida State, once they realize that, year in and year out now, they've got NFL quality guys back there. Number one draft pick just waiting to happen. Four receivers in on second and 13. Green to run up the middle. No, he won't. Maybe gets ahead for the yard, and we have seen that a number of times, so has Florida State. Andre Wadsworth tripped him up right at the line of scrimmage. Wadsworth had shoulder surgery in the offseason. He was a pleasant surprise last year, but now he's a star. That's great discipline right there to stay at home. He's the guy in the middle, the nose guard. He read the quarterback and made the play. That's big time. And Clemson had gained some yardage on the same play a couple of times earlier in the game. So, winning seconds of the third quarter, and that closes out here at... Death Valley, 31-17. We're back for more after this message and a word from our ABC station. <laughs> Last week against West Virginia. So a good one coming up next year on ABC. A lot of football left here. As Clemson on their seventh play of this drive with third and 13, a big play. And here's Raymond Priester looking for room and upended. That's a 12-yard line. Well, that's a huge play by Caper Scary. Capers came and made that tackle. Priester had his eyes set on the chains. He's come up about six yards short because Capers made a one-on-one -on -one tackle. He just upended it. That's big time. He's had a big day today, too. Sure has. Tested early and uh, big plays in the first quarter. A big stop here. So fourth and five at the 11 minus today. 28-yard attempt. And it's good. So Clemson with three more on the board, and they pull to within nine. It's 31 to 20, and Tim, they just keep hanging around and hanging around, and Florida State not used to this in the ACC. Well, I'll tell you, with 14-20 left and only 11 points down, it should be an interesting uh, final here at uh, Clemson because these guys aren't backing off. I mean, they're still playing with a lot of confidence. They're, they're moving the ball effectively offensively. Defensively, obviously, they got to make a couple of stops, and they haven't been able to do that when it was critical. History major, not a math major. So. <laughs>
31 to 20. It is an 11 point game with 14 20 left. And we'll get down to the field and check in with Spags. Thanks, Terry. As we head into the fourth quarter, interesting point. You know, the Florida State offense doesn't always help its defense out. They, they score so quickly and use so few plays with their quick strike offense. Even when they lead in the ball game, as they do today by 11 points, their defense has been on the field a long time. The Florida State defensive players are tired. They're taking IVs. Uh, a lot of them have cramps right now. And I think as we head down into the uh, waning moments of this ball game, fatigue is going to take a, a real serious factor in the outcome of this game. John, that's a good point. You know, you always talk about the lightning offense and no huddle and how quickly it can strike, but uh, it doesn't stay on the field very long. And on a day like today, it does take its toll. That's actually a good point. I wonder if Bobby Bowden would even consider the fact that they would want to use up some of the clock, just melt that clock and shorten the game here. I doubt it because he That's just likes exactly to That's exactly right, Tim. I think that the, they, he would go very happily see a 10-play, 80-yard drive right now just to get that defense under its feet a little bit. Boy, they've had some great games between these two. Remember the game in 88, 24-21, 89, 34-23, 24-20 game in 92. Mm -hmm. These two clubs have gone after each other pretty well. Was unbelievable and the officials telling him now son you have to take a knee for that thing to be dead that was incredible marlon green they should actually, have tackled him back there for a safety yeah jermaine green and he, you're right he never went to the knee he just stood there and uh, you know the clemson pursuit coming down and finally he went to the knee yeah i guarantee you the coaches will go up and talk to him the special team coaches watch this now here he is so you figure all right now they're telling him to stay there stay there take a knee he actually came out of the end no that's the uh, the letter but he didn't take a knee, and the first guy went by him. Had he made that tackle, that's a safety. As it is, it comes out to the 20. I thought for a minute he stepped out of the end zone. You know, looking over the defense, out of the shotgun. Over the middle, and he throws it right into the ground. Andre Cooper, the intended receiver. Let's get an update from New York and John Saunders. John? Terry, Penn State fighting back. Fourth down and one, they go to the pass, and Wally Richardson hits Keith Olsimer from three yards out. Penn State now leads it 21-20. John, how about that call? Yeah, they go to the pass on fourth and go at the one. Cannell, now under center, and they move the backs to the eye. Second and ten, under pressure. Tucks it, runs, and close to the first down. He takes a pop right at the 30. With a fine run by Cannell. Dawkins was there to stop him. Got the first down, too. Well, you want the story of this game. It's down at the time of possession. Look at this. Clemson, 29 minutes and 40 seconds. They have dominated the time of possession. It's a little bit surprising. That could be the most misleading statistic in the game of football. These are also big in here. These... Uh, Turnovers. Both teams have suffered and cost them 272 yards on the ground for the Tigers today. Damian Harrell, he's got the catch in the first down. Across the 40 to the 45 yard line, a 14 yard gain. What a great stat on that. You mentioned 278 yards on the ground. When Clemson goes over 250 yards or more in a game, they're 78, 4, and 1. We'll see if it applies to that. Great speed, quick out. Just use that leverage inside out. These guys separate from defenders as well as anybody I've seen in football on the college level. Under pressure again, and he gets away. On the run, did Philip Riley catch it? No. Short hop to him. Yep. Andre Humphrey with good coverage on Riley. You know, right now, Cannell is throwing off balance. He's, he's short, short arm and everything. Well, he's been under pressure in the, in the second half and throwing off balance, perhaps because of that pressure, and there is the short hop. Yeah, no question about that one. He, he got it on the hop. Good cover up, though. Made it look like a catch. Cannell, 10 of 22 for 116 yards and one TD in it. Boy, when's the last time he was under 50%? Uh-uh. Second and ten now, and they give it to Lock Preston. 
Hands it outside. Leomon Evans with a hit. A gain of about six on the play, but boy, what a stop by Evans. Yeah, Evans is saying, come on, bring it out here. I'll hit you high and take you on. Just watch him now. They're going to take it around the right side of your screen. And watch 16 come and hit him high. Always in the open field, you want to go up high. You don't want to fool around with the legs. You want to be sure with the tackle. Evans had migraines last year and had a recurrence of those in August practice, but playing well now. And out to the air for Andre Cooper, who makes the catch. Down to the 12-yard line. Andre Cooper with a fine catch and a nice move after it. Andy Ford had excellent coverage and never located the football. Andre Cooper out of Jacksonville. Watch number 43, Ford. Great coverage here, but he doesn't locate the ball. And Cooper gets away with a little shove there as well. But Cooper kept the ball in his focus. Made the catch. That's a good play. Boy, Coop, 6'2", 194. Now he's got some cramps or something's bothering him. Uh, he's walking off the field and, and two men down for Clemson. Anthony Simmons and Limon Evans. Both down on the field. Well, I thought Andy Ford had great coverage on that. Couldn't locate the ball in time. When he finally looked back, it was too late. Cooper had it. Take another look at this. Watch the end of the play. First of all, see if Coop pushes off. Now, this is the end of the play after the catch. And Our own guys ran into him. Yep. Simmons and Evans. A couple guys just knocking heads there. That was Andre Carter, 28, to come. Watch 28 come flying in here as well. Boom, right there. God, Evans took the brunt of that. And now Anthony Simmons is up. All right. Evans, the right of your screen, still down on the field. And oh, by the way, that was Florida State's first third down conversion of the day. Yeah, and it could be the one that really breaks this thing wide open, but I'll tell you this, that again was great coverage. You hate as a defense to have good coverage and let them come up with a big play like that. Well, you know, Danny Cannell does that with his receivers, though, especially Cooper. 6-2. He can go up in the air and get it, and he throws the ball up a lot and, and lets his receivers do the jump ball routine. Yeah, and Coop actually looks larger than that. He yeah. looks taller than 6-2, and he's got good ups. He can get up as well. He's got great coordination, and he's working against Ford, who's only 5'10 and a half. Yep. By and the way, Andy Ford and Peter Ford, if I'm not mistaken, the first set of twins ever to play here at Clemson. I believe you're right. Both in the secondary. Peter Ford. Cornerback, back up the cornerback. They throughout high school together and now through college. And the numbers on Cannell. Getting it done, but certainly not one of his best days. So first down at the 12. Cannell over the middle and tip. And Fortunate that he didn't have that one picked off. Antoine Edwards tipped that one over the middle of the field. I think Antoine jammed some fingers on that. That was a fastball. Look at Antoine's checking his fingers. You know, Antoine just came in because Evans went out with the injury and they test him right away. Here's number one right in the middle of your screen, right by the upright. He reads his eyes. He's playing three underneath there in a two-man five under. Oh, that's a good play. Good read on his part, just playing the middle. Eighth play of the drive, they throw it up to the corner of the end zone. And through the hands of Cooper. Coverage there by Dexter McLean. There again, excellent coverage. And I mean to tell you folks, there's some bumping and grinding going on. Watch these two guys. Watch McLean, who's only 5'10". Cooper, who's 6'3". Look, hands already pushing each other. They're going back and forth, bumping and grinding, contact. He never looks back either. McLean doesn't. Sometimes they'll call you on that. You've got to locate the ball or they will call you for pass interference. That's good defense again. You know, and a good throw, too. I mean, that was in the only spot that his receiver could get it, and uh, the coverage was a little too much for Cooper to make the catch. All of a sudden, it becomes a big third down flow. Cooper and Warwick Dunn out of the eye. Danny Cannell to throw. Cooper to the end zone, touchdown. Well, was that perfect? You can't throw it any better than that. That time, there's no question he had Andy Ford beaten badly. Watch this. These two guys are locked on right here. The quick out. Boom. There's the separation. Ford can never catch up, and this ball is perfectly thrown to the outside touchdown Seminoles. Now, Tim, that's a lot of field to try to cover on that side. 
And you're going one on one with a guy like Andre Cooper. What amazed me is Ford played him inside out, tried to force him to the outside, mm -hmm. and lost his footing. Bentley for the extra point, and it is good. So Florida State continues to roll on offense, 38 to 20 here in the fourth. Welcome back to Death Valley. Terry Gannon, Tim Brand, John Spagnola, and after the last touchdown, Tommy West, the head coach for Clemson, livid on the field. He wanted a celebration call against Andre Cooper. He just saw it go against his team on the previous series. This was a pretty close ball game when he got that called on him. and put him back in a, in a hole. They called them for excess celebration in the end zone. He wanted the same after Cooper's touchdown for Florida State. The crowd loves it, too. They love Tommy West to go out on the field like that, showing some emotion. They started chanting Tommy. He's still out there fighting. He's down 38 to 20, and he's, he's out there just fighting his guts out for the kids. 12-30 left in this one. At the 10. Back out across the 30. Wyatt still on his feet. And what a return to the 44. We've seen it all day long. 37-yard return for Antoine Wyatt. Good field position for the Tigers. And don't forget, if time permits, Stay tuned for the thrifty car rental postgame report featuring scores and highlights from across the country. Tommy West in his second full season here at Clemson. He came on, led him to a Peach Bowl win a couple of years ago. He's got a young team, Terry, 54 guys, freshmen and sophomores. And you know, this team has already gone over 280 yards against the Seminoles. Last team to go to 300 was Miami. Elon Green, the young quarterback to the air. This ball is tipped, and it's picked off at the 49-yard line of Florida State. Oh, my. Henry Crockett with the pick, and that's the third time we've seen a ball batted up into the air and the second interception of the day. That's not only a game killer, it's a crowd killer, and Tommy West now will go back to be the teacher. Just talk to him. That's three turnovers against his young club. They have killed themselves today. You cannot make mistakes against the number one team in the nation and survive. Watch this, and part of the problem is he's looking left the whole time, and he just doesn't hide anything. Once it's tipped, boy, there's no question what's going to happen to it. Watch this. He looks left. Still looking at him. There's the tip. Looks like Martin Wilson on the tip. And after Wilson got it, Crockett had an easy pick. Florida State takes over, and now on the reverse, uh, uh back at the 40, Brian Dawkins. He read it the entire way. Then they had a big gain on it early in the game. This time, Dawkins right there. When you've got safety, control, and contain, his job is just to stay home. Now watch this. He comes on the outside. There he is. He just parks himself there, stays outside, force everything back in, and make the tackle. And Dawkins, a senior from Jacksonville, Florida. He's had big games against Florida State the last couple of years. So second and 19. And out to the air. Got a man at midfield. Messam still on his feet, now down. And the ball on the ground, but he was down first. Let's see what Clemson's trying to do now. They're tackling the football as much as the guy. They were trying to keep him up and take the football away. Mm -hmm. Which is good philosophy defensively. You've got to gamble guess and really take chances and hope for some breaks here. Well, Eleven and a half minutes in counting here, so yeah, you need a break or two. A game of about five seconds and fourteen can help from the shotgun again. He's been there a lot today. Here's what it done. For a first down and much more. See you. A foot race, you're not gonna catch him. Done to the end zone. 55 yards. Yeah, I think fatigue was a factor there on defense. I mean, that's just a basic draw. And the celebration continuing after the end zone, and Clemson fans again wanted a flag. But what a run by Warwick Dunn. Now, the fans better be careful here. They're throwing things at the official down in the corner. They blew it again. They wanted a celebration call. They keep throwing things at that official. It's going to get 15 yards. Bentley good again. He's done it offense today. 45 to 20. Florida State on top. 
take another look at Dunn. Here's your ball carry. Now watch these linemen. They'll come like this. This is critical here. Boom, boom. And everything opens up. Now whoa, watch this. Here we come. Drift. Let them play themselves out. Now here's the cutback. Boom. Now watch this. You want to see a move? Watch what he does right there. That's Rory Dunn. He now has 11 carries, 175 yards, two touchdowns, and he has put himself right smack in the middle of the Heisman Trophy picture. And, Tim, when you play Florida State, you have to stop the big plays. Warwick done four runs of 25 yards or more. And that's the way they beat him. Wyatt, and out of the end zone, they'll bring it out to the 20. And let's go to New York, check in with John Saunders, who I think has some news about a former Florida State defensive back. John? Yeah, Terry, have you heard of him? Deion Sanders, he is now officially a Dallas Cowboy. Jerry Jones made the announcement just a short time ago. About 12.30 last night, had completed all of the uh, physical examinations that uh, would be required uh, of a transaction of this magnitude. <laughs> and uh, Deion Sanders signed the contract, and he's now a Dallas Cowboy. Terry, five years, $30 million, and $12 million to sign. Back to you. Not unlike John Saunders' contract with uh, <laughs> ABC Sports. Of course, they had to restructure all the other contracts that make John available. <laughs> we all make sacrifices. That's right. And that's what they did with the Dallas Cowboys. Troy Aikman restructured his. Mm -hmm. I know Emmett made some adjustments to his, and that really helps. All those guys want a ring, another ring, and uh, by restructuring their contracts to allow the money to free up for Dion, that's huge. So the speculation in. The pitch to Big E. He gets to the 21 and into the sideline fans. And the fans in the stands want a penalty flag. That's why Texas Tech still on top of Penn State. 23 to 21 now in the fourth. Flag finally come down, late hit. Personal foul. Dead ball. Personal foul on the defense. 15 yards, first down. Fans got their wish. You know, Jerry Claiborne used to always tell us at Maryland, even if you lose a game, you play hard. Watch what that team does that you lost to the next week. If you beat them up pretty good, they may not play, may not win, and you've got to handle it. I'll tell you something, a lot of guys looking off from Florida State. This has been a very physical, very exhausting game. Here's the late hit. Oh, he is well out of bounds. Yeah, I think the flag should have been thrown on the state trooper. <laughs> that was a late hit on the trooper as well, yeah. Green to throw. And batted down again. William Pittman in there with a pressure. 6'3, 265. Yeah, more importantly, Pittman's got that big old wingspan that's about sideline to sideline himself. Well, Bobby Bowden said it wouldn't be easy. Certainly not as easy as last week's game in Orlando against Duke. And it has not been, but uh, the offense has made big plays when they've had to. Green throws, and this one's batted down. Henry Crockett, who's had a big day on defense for Florida State. You know, when you get that many passes touched, you're doing something incorrectly. Now, the, the coaches will have to come back. I'm sure Tommy West will. So will Clyde Christensen. He is throwing right into defenders. Now, watch this. Crockett's coming and shows himself right in front. Now, watch this. 45. Boom. He throws right at him. You have to find the alley, the channel to throw to. And he's not doing that. But that's because he's young and inexperienced. That'll come. That's a feel that a quarterback has to develop. Third and long. That's about 10. Green. Up top. Wide open. Is hitting and he overthrew. I mean, somebody blew a coverage because there was no one within 10 or 15 yards of him. Capers maybe the closest man. Tommy West calls Green right over and starts talking to him again. What he did well on the touchdown pass earlier was just put it up there and let him catch it. Here, the adrenaline flow, he throws a rocket out there. He has to lay out. Is that a white jersey? No, see, Hinton, Hinton, all he needed to do was just get a little fly ball out uh -huh. there that he could actually fair catch, and still he would score. McAnally to punt once again. Good kick. Easter wants he 
it bounced inside the 10. No chance now. It's a low bet at the four-yard line. A 60-yard punt by Chris McAnally. That's Florida State up inside the five. A 60-yard punt for Chris Football on ABC Sports brought to you by Chevy Lumina. The features you want, the safety you need at an affordable price. That's genuine Chevrolet. Windows 95 from Microsoft. Where do you want to go today? And State Farm Insurance, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. 45 to 20, Florida State winning the party of these. I wish you were in the hill today. Getting a good view right now, though. Is the Seminoles backed up? A 60-yard punt of McNally throwing at their own four to the ground. Here's Rock Preston to the outside. And wrapped up at the seven-yard line. Antoine Edwards got a piece of from one of his ankles. I haven't seen Cannell go under center very much this, this ball game. But he did that time, and I assume we may see some more of that as they try to melt the clock now under 10 minutes to play. Tim, they've been so impressive. You know, John and I had them last week against Duke. And this week, on the day when Clemson, I think, played pretty well, Florida State, you know, just not able to be stopped on offense. You look at this team, and after this play, I want to ask you any parts of their game that you worry about. Here's Preston, a fake reverse, stopped at the 11-yard line. Oh, they're solid top to bottom. You know, Clemson came in. Terry so confident in this game, especially after rolling over Western Carolina last year or last week, 55 to 9. But we talked about this. I mean, going against Western Carolina and then coming up against Florida State, that's like playing slow pitch and mm -hmm. then going up against Nolan Ryan. Yeah. It just doesn't work. Right now, there is no question that Florida State is by far so advanced in the Atlantic Coast Conference, talent-wise, depth-wise, speed-wise, that right now everybody's got to catch up and make some giant steps or it'll continue to be a joke. Right now it's a joke. 25 consecutive wins are about to get their 26th, and they aren't even threatened very often. Average margin of victory, 31 points plus. But I really think the rest of the league will catch up. I, I, I believe what I said earlier that... Florida State's good for the conference. The conference is good for FSU. And let's go very quickly to John Saunders in New York. John? All right, Terry, thanks a lot. East Carolina had trailed 21 to nothing to Syracuse, but they come all the way back. Marcus Crandall, 14 yards to Jarris McPhail to make it a 27-24 lead. Crandall's fourth touchdown pass of the game. Maryland, meanwhile, trying to go 2-0. North Carolina lost to Syracuse last week. They're down 32-18. Terry? Not Carolina. North Carolina having a tough start to this year. A lot of people expected good things from the heels. He's a punt driving Antoine Wyatt back. And now so do the Florida State defenders down in his own 43-yard line. Back in a moment. After a 45-yard punt, Antoine Wyatt returns the ball. We take it back to 1988. Bobby Bowden on the sidelines, 21 to 21 time running out in the fourth quarter. Florida State and Clemson, a look at Danny Ford on the sidelines, nervous moments as well. The famous punt Ruski. Leroy Butler picks it up, takes it all the way down to the one yard line. A play that certainly will be remembered in Florida State history and uh, remembered as well in Clemson history, although the fans would rather not see it. The winning field goal, Florida State with the win, 24 to 21 in the old bag of tricks from Bobby Bowden. Yeah, he certainly has them. And in close ball games, I'll guarantee you'll see one or two, whether it's a bumper rooski, punt rooski, or swinging gate. He has them. <laughs> well, the funnel fog and the plate is not working the second half. Though. No, it really hasn't. I'll tell you one person that is deflated is, and we talked about at the top of the telecast, the pressure on Green, the quarterback. I mean, he's just a young kid, Elon Green, and we said a lot of the pressure would fall on him, and he really has struggled today. Eight for 21, 107 yards, one touchdown, but two interceptions and four balls tipped. Yeah. Really struggled to get the ball over that defensive line, and uh, now you pointed out when we ran back the one play, I mean, much of it was just not picking an alley to throw it through. That's youth. That's inexperience. Second down and four for the Tigers right at midfield. 18 and running. Lamont McGee's ahead for maybe a yard. That's about it. This is the Florida State team. We saw a number of people on IV in the second half on the sidelines, but uh, they've gotten a second win. 
Yeah, and don't forget Notre Dame and Purdue coming up next. The Irish on the road at West Lafayette against the solid Purdue club. And Lou Holtz trying to bounce back all week long. So many people doing stories on the Irish and what's happened to them. Two, five, and one in their last uh, eight games. And a chance this afternoon right here on ABC to bounce back a little bit. Well, you think that game is not big for Lou Holtz. Uh, he'll start feeling the heat, too. That's got to be the most exposed job in the country, being the head coach at Notre Dame. And if you start to slide like they are right now, a lot of that will come to focus firmly on him. Oh, well, it will. There's no way to get around that. And as much as he has been liked and, and maybe loved that Notre Dame throughout the years in the national championship, I mean, Eric Parsegian, a guy who, you know, at the end, in all the success he had, I mean, it is a job in which you're under the microscope 24 hours a day. And I'll be honest, Lou Holtz doesn't handle the pressure all that well. I remember at Arkansas, I remember here at Notre Dame, you start to put the heat on him a little bit, he gets feisty. A lot of times won't talk to you. Fourth and two. The knees to the outside, he's got the first down. I wonder if that's happened to Tim Brown. And that hurts my feelings. <laughs> <laughs> the knees with the first down is Tommy West goes for it on fourth down. And the drive continues. And the coach is a little bit upset. Is that Mickey Andrews on the sideline? I think he's overheated. <laughs> well, a couple of outstanding games today by a lot of players, but especially Warwick Dunn running back for Florida State. And I'll tell you something, Emory Smith of Clemson was outstanding. Absolutely. Had a huge game today. They had a big game and uh, some long runs. Smith with 95 yards and seven carries on the day. Went up a couple of scores. Green tucks and runs. Tries to get away and close to a first down. Gained about nine. And we'll see if they have to measure. There you go, Daylon. See, he learned that time. There was a guy in his face, gave him a little pump, and went under it. Well, every time they've come off the field, Tommy West has had a little talk with Daylon Green, especially in series in which they did not move the football. Constant teaching. Teach, you know, teach. And Tim, I really think as much teaching as you do in practice, I think coaches do it as much or more during games. The good ones do, you're yeah. right. There's nothing like learning in game situations, whether it is on the sidelines for coaches or for your own experience. This the game. Knocked down in the backfield. And Howard has also had a big day for Florida State. You know, Tommy West, you're talking about him being a teacher during the ball game. Tommy West came to Clemson and he had the philosophy of a home builder. And he said, quality construction doesn't happen overnight. You have to build the foundation. And you'll go through some problems in the construction before you have the house built. And once you do, if it's solid, it stays up for many, many years. And that's what he's doing here. He's building with that philosophy here at Clemson. And he's hoping the fans will be patient. To this point, they have been. Well, and let's be honest, too, with his predecessor, Ken Hatfield, a guy who came in following Danny Ford. And, uh, you know, that's, that's a tough guy to follow here in Clemson. Danny Ford is a beloved figure here. Pegues with a big run. Lamont Pegues down to the 18-yard line. Shevin Smith helped knock him out of bounds. A gain of 18 to Lamont. It was questionable before today began. Boy, sure what. He had a pulled muscle, sprained ankle, bad knee. But Thursday, we watched him in practice. We didn't even expect him to play. He ran like the wind, just like here. He sees there's no containment, so he turns it up. Boy, once he gets outside, now watch, he'll square up the shoulders and try to cut back and say, whoops. That's nice. Nicely done. So first down inside the 20 at the 17-yard line. And green to the shotgun now. Four receivers. To the air, Marcus Hinton, and where's the flag? Got to be the flag. Yeah, there you go. Marlon Green, number 41, hit Hinton. And the ball is not there yet. Yeah, there's no question about that. And that was a, a very nice touch that time by Green. Green's thrown into double coverage, but he does see his guy can split the difference. Now watch, he puts it up where he thinks his guy can get it. No question about the contact by Green, Marlon Green, 41. He makes the contact before the ball gets there right there. Boom. Never saw the ball. Okay, now that's the 15-yard rule, which will take him down all the way inside the three. And it looks like Florida State wants to talk it over right now. As Clemson inside the five-yard line, you know, 
45 to 20 game, 334 left in this one. And I believe John Spagnola has a thought down on the field. John? On the 15 yard rule, it's a very good point. Uh, half the distance to the goal would have left the ball at the seven and a half yard line. Instead, with 15 yards being marched off, the ball goes down to what, the three and a half yard line. So, uh, I still think the ball should be at the one because the uh, penalty occurred in the end zone. But again, as I said, we'll settle that later. You're not going to give up on that, Tim. No, I am not. John, I like that 5-15 rule. Of course, it benefits the defense of being a former defender. That's why I like it. And obviously, being a receiver, you didn't like it. Now spoken by the man who is the most penalized defender in the history of college football. I no, just the ACC. I think I still oh, hold the okay. record as the most penalized man in the Atlantic Coast Conference and darn proud of it next week don't forget 3 30 eastern time tennessee and florida the sec rivalry continues and that should be a good one pitt at texas and texas and uh, this trio john and i and tim will be in austin and other regional action as well call your local cable operator for the games available on pay-per-view that's next saturday here on abc sports my only my own teammates call me cheap shot artist <laughs> Well, they knew you well, I guess. <laughs> so it'll be first and goal just outside the two. And remember, folks, Clemson had not scored on Florida State in the last two meetings. They were shut out 74 to nothing. So 20 on the board here and looking for 26. Emory Smith stopped into the end zone. He bounces right off a defender and a look at the man we just talked about, the power and the legs of Emory Smith. And goes over 100 yards for the day, plus he gets the touchdown he's worked so hard to get all afternoon. Came close to breaking it twice, finally bounces into the end zone here. Huge play for Emory Smith. Boy, Emmett, Emmett's got to be proud of his little brother, but I don't think he can call him his little brother anymore. He's so much bigger than Emmett. Younger brother, to be more accurate, yeah. He may join him in the National Football League, though. Six feet, 245 pounds, and a junior out of Pensacola. And this one is blocked. Survey has it blocked. And no good. And let's go for a moment to New York. John, what do you have? Well, Terry, Texas Tech leading. Wow. John, what a game. The steel goal at the end, Tim. And what a young season it has been already. Excitement in college football. Take another look at one of the highlights for the Tigers here this afternoon. Head to head and Smith bounces outside. Here's a guy that's got tremendous, tremendous power and strength, but he also has a low center of gravity. Kept his balance that time and had the ability to get outside after a great hit. So the Tiger roars here at Death Valley as it does after every touchdown. And Tommy West now you wonder. I mean, certainly he came into the game with confidence. He talked with us. He said, I really believe we can win this game. We have to have certain things happen. And there have been a lot of positives for his team today. Well, there have been, but he didn't get that early success that uh, yeah. we all talked about that they needed to keep that confidence going. As a matter of fact, Florida State came out and uh, just took it right away from him. Matter of fact, Clemson won the toss and deferred, let Florida State have it early. And they just came down and jammed it down their throats. Yeah, and last week, Duke did the same thing, and you have to wonder about that. I'm not so sure that's the way to do it. I know in a big game, the emotions, you worry about turning the ball over, and the defense maybe have more confidence. Powerful offense over on the other side. Into the end zone, and they'll bring it out to the 20, and we will bring it back to John Saunders in New York. Terry, to remind you that coming up following your game is Notre Dame and Purdue. Ron Paulus, the Irish quarterback, was sacked four times in the loss to Northwestern. Mike Allstott went over 100 yards in the victory against West Virginia. It should be a good one. Coming up following your game, Terry. All right, John, Mike Allstott, a former Hilltopper for Joliet Catholic High School, broke all my records. Buy that? I'm just going <laughs> to suck it in, you know. Just absorb it. We did go to the same high school, and Purdue would like to push Allstott for the Heisman Trophy as well. Certainly a good runner. Warwick 
done ahead for about three. And what a day he has had. Let's go down to John Spagnola. A little bit of a curious decision by Tommy West, fellas. You know, uh, Clemson's down here by, what, uh, 19 points, and they decide not to onside kick with uh, just a little over three minutes left in the game. Kicker kick deep. I'm curious why Tommy West didn't go for the onside kick. John, you know, Florida State was loaded up for the onside kick. I thought they were going to try that little pooch kickoff that we saw them do Thursday in practice. They actually tried it earlier here. Yeah, that's right, but instead they kicked it real deep. A pooch kick might have been a good idea, too, and we saw them working on that. Very yeah. good point, John. You know what else, John? I think people are going to start talking again. Here we are with two and a half minutes to go, 45-26. Danny Pinnell's still in the ball game, but I agree with this. Well, this is not last week when they scored 70 on Duke and there goes Rock Preston about a yard short of a first down. I mean, this is uh, certainly been more of a ball game than that was last week. The genuine Chevrolet most valuable players of the game are Warwick Dunn from Florida State and Emory Smith from Clemson. Dunn 180 yards so far in this one and Smith with 97 on eight carries. Celebrating its 25th year of NCAA sponsorship, Chevrolet will donate $1,000 each school's general scholarship fund to reward outstanding students for their academic achievements and to assist those in financial need. Hubert Williams across the 30 fighting for the first down. I want to go back to what I said earlier. I, I think Bobby was right last week. And I think he's right this week. And you've got guys out there that are playing and that want to play. He played some 60 guys against Duke. 67 players out of the 75 he had available, yeah. If you're on defense, I don't ever want to hear you say, hey, they're running a the score up on us. You're supposed to stop them. That's your job to stop them regardless of who's in the game. Well, and he, Fred Goldsmith, the coach from Duke, and some of the uh, the writers around the area had some uh, thoughts about that and maybe perhaps that Bobby was running up the score. But not only your point, Tim, but also the fact that the reality is in college football today is that the poll do work that way. You know, Nebraska start, scores all the points that they did on Thursday night last week, and uh, to stay number one, you know, perhaps Florida State needed to score seven. Well, Terry, when you play that many guys, you play more than 60 players in a game, you can't ask them to take a knee. These guys went through a two-a-days. They went through all the pain and suffering. They want to play, mm -hmm. and they want to perform well, and there's still a lot of competition for jobs. Well, you made the point earlier that uh, you thought it would happen. The ACC would rise to the level of Florida State. How long do you think it will take, though? I mean, this is uh, three years plus now. Yeah, to be honest, it's taken longer than I thought. Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, a couple years ago, you had Virginia number one, and you had Georgia Tech beat them up there and won the national championship. Clemson's won a couple of national championships, and they've had two down years. It's taken longer than I thought. Maryland now just trying to come back. They've had some really down years after Jerry Claiborne and Bobby Ross, but... You know, it's a conference that I really do think will rise to the level of Florida State. Mark Preston on the carry, gaining five yards. Don't forget the Irish and the Boilermakers coming up next from West Lafayette, Indiana. That follows the conclusion of our game here at Death Valley. So the Seminoles go on the road after playing in Orlando last week at a neutral site. And uh, they get their second victory in the ACC this year, second overall. Deep Feaster looking for room and wrapped up at the 46-yard line. Number one in the nation and today, Florida State played like it. Absolutely. On both sides of the football and Clemson, they've turned the corner, I believe, here in Death Valley. This is a team that certainly will make some noise this year in the Atlantic Coast Conference and down the road for head coach Tommy West. But Bobby Bowden with a... His 251st victory. Chatting with Tommy West after the end of this one. Coming up next, the Irish and the Boilermakers. The final here, 45 to 26, Florida State. For John Spagnola and Tim Brand, I'm Terry Gannon. So long from Death Valley.